Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from? Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. There you go. There we go right there. Hallelujah. Y'all's good, isn't he? Invite us to another morning. Hallelujah. Be worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Ain't no one, no one like him. And that's the truth. Abba, y'all, we come before you on your holy set apart more deem that you invited us to. Your bride. We thank you for the covenant that you made with us, bringing us out of Mizraim into the wilderness to worship and to serve you. We thank you for the infilling and the indwelling of the Ruach HaKadosh. In the midst of this wicked generation, that we continue to keep pushing it forth about how people really truly need your set apart spirit dwelling inside of them. Fill us to the top, fill us to the rim today. And we'll bless your magnificent name. Hallelujah. Ruach, you're welcome here in this place. Move among your people into our minds, our hearts, and our spirit. Speak to us your truth in the inward parts. In the magnificent name of Yahshua, we'll glorify your name. Hallelujah. All right, maybe be seated. I'll tell you what. Y'all, y'all uh, we'll do one a-, a cappella song. Come on, y'all sisters. They're just the sister singers. Cut on these mics up here for them, Elder Doug. You may want to wait till they get up here because, you know, it may get some feedback or something like that. And, Glory to the king. Hallelujah. 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 I'll move this way down here so I don't drown y'all out. I ain't cut it on. Y'all, if you don't know the song, just turn into your Bibles to Isaiah 9, 6. It'll help you out. Huh? You want to sing too? Oh, you're looking for a singing this. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand, Israel. The most high. Sing his own hand. He glorifies me. Hallelujah. Lord to the king. Unto us a child is born. A child is born. A child is born. Unto us a son is given. A son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Emmanuel unto us unto us a child is born A son is given, and the 
of government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Wonderful, hallelujah. Wonderful Counselor, He's the mighty God, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, there shall be no end to the increase of His government. Unto us, a child is born. Child is born. Unto us, a son is given. A son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name. Be called Emmanuel. Wonderful. Mm. Wonderful counselor. He's the mighty Yah. Mighty Yah. The everlasting Father. The everlasting Father. shall be no end to the increase of his government, government nor of his peace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we, we make songs out of all the scriptures on. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, you may be seated. We're going to do something we ain't did in a long, long time. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right, anybody, y'all, if you want to come around, right, come this way right here. Anybody got a testimony of the goodness of the most high Yah? Hallelujah, and what he's done for you. Hallelujah. You just line on up and testify to his glorious, magnificent name. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Praise the Most High, Yah. I was in the bed this morning thinking about testifying to the Father. I literally was. So, boy, the pastor said that. You see, I ran up here. I said, man, hallelujah. I get the opportunity. I tell you, first and foremost, we give glory to the Most High, Yah. We thank him for the beautiful opportunity he's given all of us. And my testimony that was in my heart this morning, of course, is to the Most High, Yah. But it's actually to Pastor Dallin straightway. Because I couldn't get out of my heart, I couldn't get out of my mind the example, the dedication, the motivation, the encouragement, the exhortation. I mean, I can just keep going on and on and on and on of what is taking place here. And I'm extremely grateful and I'm asking the Father to help me, to teach me open up my understanding so I can really learn how to really appreciate what's before us today. See, a lot of y'all don't know my particular story and how I left, Father gave me Revelation 18.4 years ago. And with my limited understanding, I just quit working, everything, just trying to get out the system. That's what I understood. But I did it in faith. And in that process, I'm literally driving around the country trying to find the people of the Most High Yah. And three years later, three years, the Father led me the straight way. Hallelujah. 
So a lot of people here, I don't think we really get it and understand the level of faith that it's going to take to make it through. I don't think we understand the level of gratitude, the level of appreciation of what Yah is actually doing. He told us yesterday, remind us, he knew you in the belly. So I knew he knew I was going to be looking for these people. I'm looking for the people because I understood that he is with his people. And then when I found him, I get this shock that, okay, you can't be with him. Because <laughs> I was trying to be with him. And the father was like, uh-uh, I got something else for you to do. Because I was trying to move here to Lafayette. Some of y'all listened to the one broadcast, heard our testimony. I might have put in 50 applications from here to Nashville. I dumbed down my resume to try to get a job here. Not one phone call. But I went and stayed with Brother D and Sister uh, Hadassah. And we visited with them. And I put in two applications and got two jobs. So that's where I was supposed to be. But I'm here to testify of the goodness of Yah to all of us. Because he loved us enough to send us here. And at this point, you have still made the decision to receive the gift that he has given you and Pastor Dow and straightway. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? It is a gift. And I don't want us to be what the world would call Indian givers, giving back gifts. And uh, uh I want us to know how to receive it. I want to know how to receive it. And the best way to do that is by being obedient. It is always better than sacrifice. So I'm just grateful that the Father has chosen me, my immediate family, and this family to be in the presence of excellence. Hallelujah. Bless you, saints. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say, but uh, I know that uh, the Most High has been good to me. I was so far out in the world. <laughs> I was so far in the world. So far in the world. And uh, the Most High bought me to straightway. I was just so far, I never thought I would. I never, <laughs> you know, you lose that, that wicked family out in the world. You know, they think he's crazy, but the most high, he, he shows you that you're not. He's always by your side. And uh, I just want to say that I love y'all. Y'all my family. I don't, this is my family. And I love y'all. That's all I got to say. I love y'all. Hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Family, I, first of all, I just want to tell you I love you. Love all of you. Um, to echo Elder Rufus, I'm giving honor to the Most High for putting Pastor Dow in my life. Um, last couple of weeks, well, off and on a few weeks, I've been working with Pastor Dow in South Carolina. And uh, one night I was just laying in the, in the headquarters and the Holy Spirit started talking to me. And right before I came to South Carolina, that's when Elder Rufus first talk, started talking about the gift that's before us. So he started ministering to me. So actually, while we were working, I'm, I'm really looking at Pastor, watching his moves, how he interact with people, and just the, just the things that he do. Because I know, like he said, he lived the word. He's, the, he's trying to embody living the body. And I just want to thank you, Pastor, for being an example for me to show me what I'm supposed to be. Thank you. I testify that Jesus is the Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, came and died that I might live. I'm very, very, very thankful and grateful that the Father put me with a pastor and a man who is leading and guiding me as a husband, as a true example of what Christ was when he was here on this earth. And as Brother Roger used to say when he testified, the Father knows me for who I really am. And in that, I'm thankful that the Father has changed my mind in a lot of areas. Five years ago, I don't 
didn't think the same way that I think now, and I thank him that he's still increasing and helping me to grow so that I might make it to the kingdom. I thank you, Father, for writing my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> I'm overcoming right now, so y'all just long suffer with me, all right? Um, since day one, the first time I started listening to Pastor Val, um, and, you know, my whole life, right? <clears throat> you grow up with, uh, with, with people who, uh, who, who think they are, are men, right? And, and they show you, uh, you don't know anything else, so you, you're going to follow them, right? And when you start getting to a point where you're, you're growing beyond them, and you need to better yourself, right? Because spiritually, we're, they can't help you anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. They can't help you anymore. So you, like Pastor says all the time, everybody has the same testimony. You get down, you pray to the Father. Yeah, what do you have for me? You know what I mean? Like, show me. All right. My whole life I've been ostracized, been just, just picked. You, you know how it is. And, and you... You come to here and you realize that this is why. <laughs> you're, not, you're not of them. You know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> oh, woo, hallelujah. That's why I'd be so happy and so joyful because I'm finding out who I am. Like, it's been taken away from me. You know what I mean? Like, and I've been provided the opportunity to, 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 to share this with my children. You know what I mean? Like, they no longer, they're not going to have to grow up and wonder who they are. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to have the, the they're going to have y'all in them. You know what I mean? Like, like. Oh, hallelujah. Um, I'm happy. I'm telling y'all. Uh, I met Brother Freeman. And it was the first time I met somebody that, uh, that shared, like, the same genuine love, right? You know the love that you try to give to people in the world, but they don't know how to receive it. And because of that, you become callous. You become hard. Because they don't know how to. So you think there's something wrong with you. But this whole time, they don't know how to receive what you have. So I, I met this brother, and it's just like, whoa, it knocked me back. Because it's like, this is, this is what I've been trying to, to give the people. And they didn't know how to receive it so much that I didn't even know how to receive this love here. And I had to go, and I, I had to ask the Father, like, soften me up. I, don't, I want everything that you have to offer. You know what I mean? I don't want no more of this world in me. I don't want it. This right here is where I want to be. It's where I want my family to be. Like, since I've been here, I've seen my wife, how she's just been becoming like a... <sighs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, man. I love y'all. I'm telling you. Every last one of y'all just on the camera, like, wherever, like, scattered abroad, like, I'm happy and I'm learning who I am. And at the end of the day, like, my children, like, I hear constant, like, doing Shabbats. The evening pastor's always talking about the children, the children, Israel beyond, like, after us and after them. And that's what you want. Like, that's what you want. It's no longer about me. You know what I mean? Like, it's no longer, it's about my daughter. It's about your daughter, you know what I mean? It's about your son. Like, it's about their children. And everything that we're doing is for, is for them, man. Like, man, I talk to y'all all day. I'm just saying. <laughs> ah, Shabbat Shalom. Yahweh, thank you. Jesus, you are my master. I could not say that before I had the Holy Spirit. Like, I could not say that. <laughs> Oh, man. 
Ah. Ah. You want thirst again, man? I'm telling you. Never thirst again. Hallelujah. I bless y'all. That's it. That's all I got. Hallelujah. Bless you, saints. Love you all. Um, the Most High brought me straightway uh, about five years ago. And um, like most of us in the walk, we don't exactly uh, know where we're headed at. We're searching, looking down different type of avenues, searching for truth once the Father brings it to you. And I was at a level of confusion from uh, searching so hard and seeking his face and the family not uh, understanding y'all, none of his ways or anything. And um, when I came across Pastor and I spoke to him just one time on the phone, all that confusion went away. And I knew from that point on, this is the man that Yah has sent to guide me. And I've stuck by him, and I'm going to continue to stick by him. Because I do know, just like Elder Ruth has said, he's a gift. Yes, right. And that blows my mind that the father would take a man. He would take a man, take that man's life away from him, and cause him... And cause that man to be servile to his people. And not only that, but this man, this man healed me. I went to this man when I was in need. And he laid hands on me and he healed me. And this man, after he healed me, he looked at me and he said, Brother Ron, I love you. Man, I'll tell you, man. Y'all's good. Y'all's good, man. And then he gave, he gave me all y'all. He gave me all y'all. Even though we all jacked up and we getting better, he gave me all y'all. I know I'm jacked up. Father's good, man. The Father's good. Everybody who got, you know, anybody got anything to say about straightway? It's not even a man. Y'all going against the Most High? How do you go against? How do you go against the Father, and think you going to get by just because he don't say nothing at the moment? How do you stand against him when he's building his people? And he's healing his people. And he's making all these miracles. And you stand against him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's it. Love y'all. Where do you start, huh? Saints, can you please help me give the most out some praise? Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Yah is good. And there's no greater way to testify that Yah is good. You could look around and you see all these people that's in here. And in the amount of six to five, five to six years, many have come and many have gone. But the few that remains is because we're strong and we're growing. And if it wasn't for the strength of our pastor, I don't know where any of us would have been at right now. I'm thankful to be under his pastorship and to be a sheep. I don't care if I was whatever else the father named me to be, a dog, a cat, as long as I'm going in the kingdom with the father and our leader. Many people have stories, but very few have testimonies. Because that testimony is what makes you change. And we're told over and over again that the truth ain't for everybody because the truth requires that change. 
So how can you say you love the father who you can't see, but you got a pastor in front of you that's showing you by example. He sacrificed his time in life. Like our brother said before, his life was taken away from him. Moses didn't ask to be Moshe. Pastor Dow didn't ask to be pastor. But he lived a life of example, and now he is a shepherd unto all of us. And we need to be straightening our pastor up. We need to straighten our pastor in everything he does. He's doing right now. He's a doer, not just a preacher. And so that's my testimony. Um, about five or six years ago, I was selling weed in the streets in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Living a, a life that was um, put before me after those who, who were my peers, those who I looked up, looked up to, trying to, you know, have a reputation in front of the hood. And these hood niggas, they getting locked up, they out of debt, and they ain't doing nothing. No example. And so here I am, I got, I got a gun put in my head, a revolver. And I, that man shot me that night. I didn't go to no hospital. I didn't, um, I wasn't bleeding. I woke up, and the person who was there considered me dead, and he looked at me like I was a ghost. And we t within a, a, year, a year to two years, I found Pastor Dow. And so I can say, not only did he baptize me in the name of Jesus, but I'm no longer living to die just like many people that's in the world. I died in order to live. And I thank you, Pastor Dow. I thank you, my father, my brother, and I love you all. And I'm going to show you by my actions. Bless you. When I first started off in this walk, I started off like Brother Scott. I had no, no religion, no nothing at all. I'm just thankful for the simple things of just being clothed in my right mind, waking up every day, knowing to pray to him, knowing to give him praise, and to read his word. I can honestly say I got already in this lifetime a hundredfold. I got a dad. I got a master in the flesh right there passed down. I got balls. Brothers who watch over me. I got sisters. I got brothers. I got elders. And they, these people literally, they really care for my soul. It took, it took me, just like they say in the word, you learn your obedience through the things you suffer. It took me a while to figure that out because my mom, she was in the hospital. Me and Sister Caroline, we went over, we laid hands on her. And she had some crazy illness that was rare that you just, you didn't know anything about it. And she got healed. She got healed. But they couldn't figure out what was going wrong with her. She was dying for like a week straight. When she got healed, she was, you supposed to give, the, the word already says you supposed to give praise to the Father. She didn't give no praise to him. I went to her and I said, do you know what just happened to you? You just got healed. She said, no, I didn't get healed. Because her temperature dropped down. She was at 108. She went back down to 96. She, she, dis she disclaimed it. That same night she died. I, I called Elder Rufus. Elder Rufus said, I wouldn't even go see her again. I didn't go see her. My mom, my Chester died. Man, I stood outside. shed more tears for that woman than my natural mom ever in my life. I never thought I would feel like this for people, but I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And it even, and it just shows the difference because the difference in the heart condition because my wife, she was dying too. And the father had me lay hands on her. She had never had to worry about that sickness ever again in her life. So I, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really thank, I, it don't, that's why I just love to praise them. Because it don't matter if it's the simplest things, like Psalms say, give them, give them thanks to the remembrance of his set of partners. I don't care if it's from the first time when I got called to when the hell I just got healed yesterday. It don't make a difference for me. I'm just thankful towards them. And I just want to give them praise. I just, I give glory to his name. Hallelujah.
Bless you. Truly, I give honor to my Lord Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. Thank him for life, health, and strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank him for this ministry. Because what I went through a couple months ago, I would not have been here if I would have been in Christianity. I thank the Father for a pastor. I thank the Father for Georgia, because I called Sister Jennifer, and I know Sister, I, I could have called Sister Carol to come, but I know she was so busy. I said, I get the next best thing. I called Sister Jennifer. And I called Sister Jennifer, and, they, and, they, and Sister Sandra and Sister uh, uh, Zaza, they came and prayed, because I needed deliverance before I went into that surgery. Because if I had not gotten delivered, I wouldn't be standing here today. And you know, those in the spirit, uh, your flesh will try to tell you, say, oh, you mother bullock, you don't need to call for nobody for prayer. I said, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I ain't nobody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, no, I said, pride won't sit in here. You know, sometimes we can allow pride to cause us to lose out. But I thank the Father for this ministry. And I look at, I see, I'm out there. And I know I have met other Israelite brothers and sisters. And all they talk about is law, 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 law. They don't, they don't deal with the spirit. They don't ask, they don't deal with uh, speaking in tongues, laying on hands. They don't deal with none of that stuff. And they look just as dead, dried up, plucked up. And I told the father, I said, I don't want to look like that. I said, I know I found the truth, but I don't want to look like that. I said, I I said, I've been in Christianity and had the Holy Ghost for a long time. You meant to tell me I got to give up the Holy Ghost and look like that? No, sorry. And I kept praying. I, I went to the house. We was in the, at the house. I went to the house. I said, I said, we just sit in the house by ourselves. And we kept uh, on, the, on the computer just looking at different Israelite camps and stuff. And we came across Pastor Dow. And he was talking about speaking in tongues, laying hands. I said, I know I ain't crazy. <laughs> They're trying to make me think I was crazy. I said, this is where I need to be. And then I uh, found out he was in Lafayette, Tennessee as well. We Googled it. I said, 10 hours? I said, Father, help us. <laughs> then we came across that crazy man up there in South Carolina. I, I looked at his spirit. I said, mm mm. I ain't fooling with that. Mm mm. I said, no, I might as well stay where I'm at as I'm going to fool with that. No, sorry, I ain't fooling with that. And I thank the Father that I found Pastor Dollar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is something I've been looking for all my life. You know, you can love sisters and they love you back. You can love brothers and you can love them back. And, and I'm going to tell you something else. This is, this is about the only place, I'm being real, only place I've ever been that I have to fight lust spirits from the men. I know what I'm talking about. I mean, you, you got to fight. Every, every time you come into the church, you got to fight. <laughs> I say, I, I know I ain't no beauty queen, but I, why I got to fight when I come into the church? You know, and I thank the Father. I didn't feel that here. I said, oh, I found the right place here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I can hug a brother. Yeah. And he's a brother. Yeah. Those are my sons. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I thank the Father for that. Y'all yeah. just don't know. Y'all don't, don't know what you really have. My sister and I talk about it all the time. If you only really knew what you really have here. Some of y'all need to go out there and stay about a month. Spend a month out there dealing with them folk. And you'll come back with a better attitude. You'll love your sister like you're supposed to love your sister. You'll love your brother like you're supposed to love your brother. Because I was with Israelite sisters my age wouldn't even put a head covering on Proud, arrogant. 
They won't nobody tell them nothing. Young ones and old. Stuck in their makeup and their pants. We come to church with pants on. And so when I got here, I felt like I was in heaven. Because I know where I was coming from. I felt like I was in heaven. I said, oh, yeah, this is all right. Then I hear pastor cutting you down. I said, did it bad? I said, it can't be that bad. I know where I come from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because y'all keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on doing what you're doing. Now, if you want to go, if Pastor has to not have to send some of y'all out and let y'all stay out there about a month or two, when you come back, you'll be right. I guarantee you, you will be right. Shabbat shalom. And before you today, I'm just so grateful. So much to be grateful for. Because of this ministry, my life has changed. So much peace in my life. Because it passed it down and straightway truth. Closer to the Father like I've never grown before. I have an intimate relationship with him and I have his Ruah in me. I thank the Father today for um, his being so merciful unto me. Because I'm so unworthy, but when I look back over my life, um, I grew up in Christianity, and I lived a life where I, I knew I was saved. I knew I was going to heaven, and I, I wasn't searching for nothing. Nothing. I was not searching for anything. Because of a righteous man that the Father blessed me with, to my husband watch Pastor Dow's videos these weapons and yelling screaming <laughs> I'm on the Sabbath day I'm thinking we keep the Sabbath he would stay up for hours on end two days at a time wouldn't sleep I would keep hearing these videos play over and over. Thinking, what are we searching for? I ain't looking for nothing. <laughs> I'm saved. <laughs> when my husband loved me enough, Pastor loved me enough to tell me the truth on the videos. My flesh said no, but my spirit said yes. I said yes to your will, Father. Yes to your way. I had a lot of dying out to do. I still do. I had to remove the makeup and the pants and all these things. I got to put on those hair covering and all this. My husband said, I just want you to listen. Don't worry about how he's saying it, but listen. And it was nothing that he said that was not true. I opened my Bible. I looked at Noah's ark. How the animals went on the ark. I've been lied to about the animals on the ark, how they went in. But I'm saved. 
I knew if they could lie to me about that, something so simple. This man was telling the truth. As every passage that I turned to was true. Everything that he said about wicked women was true. Me and me. And so ever since we've come into this ministry, it's been five years now. My life has been abundantly, exceedingly pressed down, shaking together. I mean, overflowing just with blessings and peace and love and joy of my sisters, my family. I stand before you today as a young woman. I grew up for 15 years of my life. I should have been probably gay. I probably should have been dead. I stand before you today, a young woman has molested for 15, 10, 15 years of my life, but I still have my right mind. I stand before you today, so grateful that the Father he kept me. He kept me all them years. He kept me. And nobody, I don't even understand sometimes how or why. Why he would do it for me. Who am I? Nothing. But he kept me. I never understood in my family why I was always the one trying to bring everybody together and keep the peace. And and all this time behind closed door, I'm the one being run over. But I testify to the Father of his goodness and his mercy that he opened my ears and he opened my eyes. I don't have to walk around feeling rejected. I don't have to walk around Feeling like I'm just nothing, but I know that I'm a child of the king. I know that I'm his. I'm thankful for this ministry and that the father has blessed me with such a righteous and holy husband. And he has given me the ability to bring forth his children. And I thank the Father for those three sons. Oh, Jesus. I thank the Father for making me a keeper at home. To, to teach these children I'm so unworthy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Because of this ministry, I know my role is because of Mother Carol I can look at it and I know I'm striving for to be like to do the woman that Yahweh had me to be so he gives me the strength day by day to impart into these young men who would never know the world who will be raised up in this these strong men warriors of the most high Yah. My son asked me often, Mom, when was I a heathen? What did I do when I was a heathen? <laughs> and I can always proudly answer him and say, Son, you were never a heathen. You were born in this. two after him and the others to come. I praise y'all for that. Praise y'all for my husband who is such a humble man. Oh, Father. He works day and night to cover us, to protect us. 
Oh, Jesus. I'm so grateful for it. If it wasn't for my husband, he had a word that the Father had placed in his spirit. I wouldn't stand before you today. I'd be lost and on my way to living and burning hell. But I was saved. I'm so grateful. Thank you for each and every one of my sisters, my true sisters, all the brothers. Thank you for the Father for giving us his spirit. Thank the Father for leading and guiding my husband. And he just keeps blessing over and over and over again. And I noticed that the more my husband gives, the more the Father blesses us. I thank the Father for this ministry that comes to prayer and deliverance. For Mother Bullock, for teaching us young women how to pray, how to lift up our households, how to lift up our husbands. And I just see over and over how the Father continues to bless, how he continues to bring the increase into our home. I never thought that I'd be out of the city. I never thought I would enjoy peace. I never thought I would enjoy growing a garden. But because of all these things, I see me. Because of these children, I see my wickedness. Because of all these things of coming out of the city and living a set-apart life and knowing who I am and knowing my heritage that I can impart then into these young men, I'm so grateful. I could testify all day because I'm just so grateful. But I bless you for your time and listening. I praise the Father for he is worthy of every praise, of all the glory, and all the honor. Hallelujah. testify of how faithful the Father is and how good he is. I thank him for choosing me. No matter what happened in my life, he, was, he never left me. He always made a way. He always had a faithful friend there to help me through it. He always made a way for me to hear the word. And my family didn't want me, but he gave me a hundredfold. <laughs> I can testify that as long as you're faithful to him, he will take care of you. And I'm so grateful that all he's done and all the saints that he's put in my path. I'm thankful for him. Pastor for adopting me and my mothers, my sisters, my brothers. I'm so thankful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. to begin. Uh, I never wanted to be in America. I really never did. So <laughs> I, I, oh, I wanted to go home. So when I came to this country, I did what my auntie said. I went to school. I did the whole school, college stuff, all that stuff. But I wanted to go home. I wanted to go home really, really bad because just being here and seeing how this country had made me to be. I really didn't recognize myself. Uh, I wasn't in the right mind state. It was like a switch, and I became something that I never even knew was in me. Ah, uh, oh goodness. You know, like, 
just being a child and having your innocence taken away and then you place you place in a culture where they feed everything that your flesh could possibly desire for me was very strange to my mind and I didn't have no escape route so I was very close I was I was I did not smile for three years in my entire life because I was so hurt I was I was so hurt I was I was in pain I, I just shut my heart to everybody and everything uh, and I wanted to go home uh, before I make that decision I was introduced to Pastor Dow's channel and I was like man what he's saying is so true but my heart wants to go home like I understand like he's preaching and what he's preaching is the gospel because you could really put yourself into it and live it because of experience so I land so I was torn between okay will you stay here you know and follow or will you go home and I, I began talking to my family that I came with from Africa and they was they was gone too just like how I was gone but they was more gone than <laughs> I was because I was trying to maintain and hold on to my culture because living in this society people don't have culture and when you don't have culture you don't know how to restore anything you don't know where you come from you don't know your desire you don't know none of that so when I heard him and I saw the way they was living I was I was shocked a black man in America doing garden and he has a, a, a wife and she's black and she's so humble are you serious is this happening she's now one of those ghetto women I was really amazed and then when I saw the the, the white people, as, excuse my language, but when I saw the white people, I was even more amazed because for me, it's like I, this whole country was for white people. So then when I saw, you know, them all living together in one common unity, it, it was, oh, geez, I can't even, <laughs> I, I was disturbed. I was, I was like, what is going on? So I was like, but I have to meet this man. I really do. And so I put my back, so I just, I told myself, okay, follow him, see what he says, and I did. And I realized that this cruel, hardcore person that I became was because of, uh, I learned through the, through the spiritual warfare, you know, it's things that I have inherited, it's things that I have done. So I stand before all of you and telling you I am learning all over again. I'm learning to gain back my innocence. I'm learning to learn who Yah is. I, I don't know Yah. I really don't. And I'm learning him now. And I'm learning love. I'm learning kindness. I'm learning uh, humbleness. I'm learning. I'm learning. It's like a child being raised up again. And that's, that's my mind state. So I'm grateful that I did not go home even though I wanted to, but I'm grateful that uh, the Most High led me this far to be before everybody and to learn uh, what it means to be tribal once again. And, and the whole thing is to make it to the kingdom. And I pray we all do, but that's my testimony. I, I want to make it. I <laughs> I'm learning that I'm so wicked <laughs> that I need a savior. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I want a clean heart. I want a clean heart. I want to be free. I want the Holy Spirit to really work with me to make it. And I thank y'all for giving me mothers, sisters, fathers, the whole family, and giving me a husband because I didn't know what it means to be married. So now I'm learning how to be under authority to make it to the kingdom. So I, I just thank y'all for like, giving me the chance to overcome my weakness. And I pray that I really do strive to overcome hell and Satan uh, to make it. So bless you all. Bless you, saints. 
I testify to the goodness of my wonderful father. I'm so grateful to have a father. I lost my natural father when he was 51 and I was 21. And um, that was a real loss to me because he, he was a good provider. He was a teacher, school teacher. My mother also was a school teacher. And they provided a uh, normal um, Gentile household where I had two brothers and, and we grew up and had all the amenities that you normally grow up with, TV and, and time to ride your bike and ride around the neighborhood and stuff. And um, it also gave you a lot of time to sin. And I, as I began to add sin to my life, it got harder for me to like myself. I really began to hate myself because I, I knew that I was guilty of things that I was hiding from my parents. I was guilty of things that I never really, I didn't get raised up in any kind of a religious institute. When I was a uh, second grader, we fell away from the church, the pre Presbyterian, just a watered down type of church. And, and so I never knew anything about Jesus, but I had made a flower one time and I had the 10 commandments on the little petals. And the one that stuck to my mind was, do not use the Father's name in vain. Even though it was a Gentile mindset, I never wanted to use his name in vain. So I did remember there was a God and I did, pray to this God occasionally uh, throughout my life, but I felt worse and worse as I grew up. And I, I said, what do I want to do with my life? And I thought, well, my parents wanted me to be a teacher, but I didn't want to be a teacher. I wanted to be a secretary. I thought that would be a little easier route. I don't have to go to college. That sounds good to me. Well, I got a job when I was in high school, and I started working as a secretary, a very nice job. And I realized I'm only getting a quarter a year raise. Every year I'll only get one quarter raise. I don't think I want to go this route. I want to make a little more money. So I decided I would bit the bullet I would go into college. So I did get a degree and I did start teaching. But I never felt worthy to even be a teacher. Inside my heart, I thought I was so worthless. You know, how am I standing up in front of children and I've got this past of sin in me? But I said, well, you know what? I can put that, that behind me. That's not too hard to do. I can play that, you know, I'm this good person. You know, they looked up to me. They came for library books. I, and I did really put my heart into being a good teacher. So I did have, I did not set a bad example for them, but in my heart, I never felt worthy to be there. And then it, as I was teaching, I noticed how the children that came along, the ones that had religious training were a little better behaved. And I had married and I thought, you know, when I have children, that's what I want to do with my children. I want to give them something better than I had. I didn't have religious training. Maybe that's what I had missed because maybe I'd have been a little better teenager and come through things easier. So that's what I decided to do. When I had children, I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bite the bullet. I don't feel worthy to even walk in a church, but I'm going to do that. For them, I felt like I was a lost case. I was going to hell. I just knew that. And I said, but for my children, I really want to give them something better than I had. Maybe I can keep them pure. Maybe I can help them. And I did that, and I put all my heart into going to this church and learning about Jesus. Huh. I, I said, my goodness, I, I never thought that somebody would die for me. And it began to lay on me, and I was like, wow, I'm not worthy of any of your kindness, Father. And the, the class that they, I was a little Sunday school class, and it was the, the adult class, and none of them, uh, they didn't have a teacher. So they said, here, you, you take the book, you teach next time. And I kind of watched this. I was kind of new, and I was like, I watched how they, no, you take it. Oh, all right, I'll do it. There was a little reluctance to teach. And when it, I said, I don't know anything about Jesus, but I'll be glad to teach a little. I'll take the book. I loved taking the book. Once I got the little Sunday school manual of how to do that, I began to go to the library. I started looking up stuff, and I started, wow, finding out this person is real, and he has lived. And then I came across, I remember asking Pastor, one of the first things I asked him, I said, Pastor, it really bothers me. It says that in the Bible, it says that the woman that was caught in adultery, that she was to go and sin no more. And that bothered me because I would pray to the Father, how do I do that? How do I go and sin no more? Because I didn't know how to get rid of that off of my record. And then I began to read that Jesus can take that off your record. You, you literally can be freed from that, and you can put it behind you, and you can walk on, and you can go and sin in that area no more. And that's why I began to study, and I said, well, then I need to find a deliverance church. This church is not doing it. There are spirits in me. I began to find that out. So I said, okay, I'm going to find a deliverance church. Well, I went looking for one when I moved to this area in Nashville, and I found a deliverance church. Uh, actually, I found one in Texas before that. And when I moved to Nashville, I had learned a little bit about deliverance, 
But what I didn't know until I met Pastor that it was actually a false deliverance church. This church was uh, run by a man and a woman preacher, and the woman preacher was over the deliverance department, and I believe they were a hidden group of hoodooists because of some of the things that hoodoo does, this particular church was doing. So I was getting spirits out, but they were coming just as back as rapidly in me because I didn't know scripture. So when I met Pastor, that was the turning point in my, my life, and I, I thank the Father for Pastor Dow. I had um, met him at a conference, and um, I called him up and I said that I'm really being bothered by this spirit. And he could hear the spirit in through the telephone. And he said, Sister, if you can get here, we will help you with deliverance. I said, Yes, sir. I came here, and Sister Carol and Pastor Dow, the manifestation of the spirit began, and they did cast the spirit out. And it's truly been a love affair with the Father and with this ministry ever since. I appreciate, appreciate you all listening to it. And I pulled Abraham up here because I want to testify to this ministry. I want to testify. Pastor mentions that the three pillars of Christianity, we all know them. I won't recite them, but the Father has an opposite of that. He has three pillars to his faith, deliverance, salvation, and healing. And I testify to all three of those working as a result of the pastor's preaching, my hearing it, and my walking in the faith. I, I thank him for that. The one thing that I was missing from that Christian church, they never talked anything about the Holy Spirit, so I didn't have a helper within to help me stop not sinning, and I learned that from pastor. So the sanctification part began as soon as I learned. I had been filled with a spirit thinking it was the Holy Spirit through the Christian church, but it was a false Holy Spirit. It was not the Holy Spirit at all because I was not stopping sinning. I was not changing my lifestyle. And uh, it wasn't until I met Pastor, who did fill me with the, the true Holy Spirit. And since then, I've been able to actually put sin behind me. And just as uh, Sister Toma testified, she wants to make it in, I also do too. So I'm very much a, a deliverance-minded person because I hate seeing sin on anyone. And I hate seeing it, more importantly, on myself. Because I know that if I can get me free, that I might be able to be a help to you all. And that's, that's my heart. And I ask Abraham to step up here with me because I do testify to not only this ministry being a sanctifying church that is filling people and has filled people with the Holy Spirit, and we are walking in holiness. We are stopping sin in every area of our life. And I thank Jesus. I never thought that I could because I knew what I was like, like Mother Carol testified to one of our blessed brothers. He would always get up and say, the Father knows me for who I am. I know me for who I am, and I know what is behind me. And I thank that the blood is what covers me. And it's Jesus' sacrifice and his sinless life that has allowed me to be here and to follow under such a man who is also teaching us how to be sanctified in all areas. And um, I testify to the healing blessing that I had learned. Um, when you grow up in a white society, you all know it, possibly a lot of you all from the Hebrew perspective of how the whites are uh, oppressing you, they press you down, they do not supply the things that you need, they don't allow you to have the same privileges and breaks, but when you come from the white perspective, you have all the privileges, and you can either join them and be like that, and then just act like those black people are just a bunch of monkeys, and they really don't know what they're doing, they aren't, they aren't, you know, you just three-quarter human, whatever, you know, you can join that group, or you can step aside and say, well, now, hold on a second. I don't really see them to be like that. And I was more like that in the limbo of, you know what, I don't see them to be like that. I was in school with black children, and they were every bit as smart as I was. I always thought they were just underprivileged, but I didn't know why. And now I have learned just how awful that this captive group, European Americans, are to all human beings, but especially to the Hebrews. And I'm committed to helping all the way I can anyone I can, but especially to for those that are seeking the truth. And when I um, began to understand that we have power, we actually have power to heal, I was so excited because one of my problems growing up in that European thing was my mind. 
My mental capacity was not right. I, 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 wasn't, I didn't think right. My mind was, um, had problems. And one of the things I discovered is what they call bipolar or manic depressive. When I began to study, one of the books that Pastor showed us and taught us about was Henry Wright's A More Excellent Way. In that book, they talk about that a person with manic depression or bipolar, they actually have a corrupted gene. The 21st set chromosome is messed up. With that being messed up, you go, you're going to have a mental problem. You're going to have problems. The Father healed my 21st chromosome in every <laughs> DNA strand. And I can testify to the power of it. And it used to be when I'd read the Bible, if, I'd say, if it would say, like, give a reference, okay, go to Isaiah 23 to get a little more information. I couldn't hold it in my mind. I would say, okay, Isaiah 23. I couldn't hold it in my mind, simply flip over to Isaiah 23. I'd have to go, I've got to write that down. Or Isaiah 23, Isaiah 23, Isaiah 23. My mind was not thinking correctly. I have a clear mind now. I can, I can, I can hold things in my mind, and I, I thank the Father for it. I testify also to the healing power that is within me that does work. I'd like Abraham to share a little testimony, if he doesn't mind, with what went on this week. Um, one of the things we're getting ready for everyone to come, and we like to beautify the land, and I, I like to work the land, and one of the things I was doing was trimming some hedges. And the boys were with me, Zephan and, and Abraham, and I had given them a break. It was hot, and they were sitting under a little tree just having a little drink of water in the shade while I was still working. And what did you say, Abraham? Do you remember how you got my attention? Um, I got stung in the neck um, by a bee, um, and then you told me to just to uh, um, look at you while you're gonna pray over the bee sting, and then you, and then you started um, healing it, and then right after that, it didn't, it didn't hurt or nothing, it didn't swell or nothing. You go sit down. Yes, and, and the commanding power of Jesus Christ rose up in me. It was not me that did any of the healing, but because I spoke the command of, in the name of Jesus, I command this bee sting to be healed. I command all pain to go, all swelling to go. I wish you could have seen his face. It went from, Mother Barb, I, got a, I think I got stung. And I'm really hurting, and he's crying. And, and all of a sudden, the smile came to his face. And that's why I'm attached to the ministry. I love the children. I love you all. And most importantly, I love seeing the Father get the glory. Bless you, saints. Love you. Shabbat shalom, saints. I stand here by his grace and his mercy. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be here. I'm so thankful for all my brothers and sisters. When I was at death's door, he healed me. He's delivered me many times. I thank you, Pastor, for your strength and keep pressing through this hard and wicked, wicked generation and helping us get our minds right so that we can be in peace and the women that the Most High has called us to be. I love you all. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Um, I'm an overcomer right now, just standing before you to speak. <laughs> um, I have so much to be thankful for. Um, this is actually my second testimony in front of a bunch of people in my life. My first one was when I visited Straightway six years ago. Um, and when I look back, my testimony then was so small, you know. I was overcoming and um, the Father was just bringing me through really small things. But in the last six years of being in his ministry, he's done so much for my family. His mercy and love, he's got us through so much. We have so much peace in our home. We have a family that shows us true unconditional love. Me and uh, my husband, we come from two very big families, so it was kind of hard to separate from them. And you know, uh, coming here, we have uh, 
I always call Pastor my dad, but he doesn't know that. But I always say my dad, and Mother Carol is my mom, and I have my big sister Jennifer and <laughs> Ashley, and I have so many other sisters and brothers, you know, and my daddy, Dow, and mother. But he brought us here, and <laughs> since me here, we have, our faith has grown so much, I can testify. Our love for the Father has grown so much. <laughs> I thank Pastor for this ministry for all the time that he's been studying and giving us his word, no matter how much it kills us, you know, kills the old man. Thank you, Pastor, for all of that, all of, all of your hard work. I thank Mother Carol for always spending so much time with me, showing me the wickedness, helping me to get over the wickedness of my heart. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank my husband for enduring all the wickedness that he has to do with me. I thank him for seeking the Most High Yah and actually following him. There's not many men that can do that in this day. There's so much that the world shows you, and he followed, he followed the Most High, and I thank you. I thank you so much for leading our family in the right direction. <laughs> thank you all. Bless y'all, saints. Um, giving all honor and glory to the Most High Yah. Uh, I'm thankful for Jesus, my master. And I'm so thankful for the blood. Jesus, Jesus is the builder of all things. And I'm so thankful for what he has done in my life. It's not my life anymore. Uh, I often hear teacher Shane say that it's not our faith. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. When I first came into this walk, I was on my computer and I was reading about, I had just found out what sin was, and I'm there on the edge of my bed at my laptop, and I'm reading what sin is. And I'm like, oh man, that's what sin is? <laughs> this whole time, that's what sin is? It's been right there in the book the whole time. And as I was reading that, it's like it got dark all, all around me. It, it felt dark. And I'm just so thankful for what Yah has been doing. I want to thank all the saints um, for, for all the gifts and all the blessings, all the encouraging words. Uh, for being there with me um, at um, my wedding that the Father blessed me with. I want to thank all the saints for the gifts and um, you all are just so beautiful. You all are my family. You all are my family. <laughs> I want to, I was in the dining hall, we all were in the dining hall, um, and I was sitting at the table eating. <laughs> but before I say that, I want to thank y'all for Pastor Dow. I thank y'all, because he told us in his word, I would give you, I would give you pastors according to my heart. I was in that at all. Just sit down, eat my little food, you know. <laughs> Pastor Dow was sitting over there. And he got up. And he walked over towards me. And he put his hand on my head. 
He said, I'm so thankful that I'm not going to lose you. No, no man after the flesh. Not by power, nor by might, but by his spirit. I'm so thankful to be a son. Thank you, Father. I'm so thankful for being a son. Bless y'all, saints. Shabbat Shalom, saints. My testimony is only in part mine. And I've listened to all the testimonies, and it's a, it's a, it's a heavy thing to be blessed enough to be in this way. And when I said in part, the other part is right back there. 92 years old. That Mother Beasley, my grandmother, has had the heart for the father her entire life. And the reason why I'm speaking of her is because it was her that started me on a journey when I was really young. She didn't know that it wasn't right to go to church on Sunday. But she did know that she loved the Father. She knew about speaking in tongues. And she knew that there were demonic forces that you had to keep away. And so when my opportunity, the Father came to me when I was in Christian church in that sound room, watching and just hearing things every Sunday, and it became a point where it was like, Father, I need something more. Because I'm worse off coming in, going out, than I am coming in every single Sunday. And I'm sitting back there, and Pastor always talks about how being up here, he wishes he could have a mirror so you could see what he sees. But when you're back there in that sound room, you see something as well. You see another side of everything. And I sat in that sound room, and I prayed, and I said, Father, this is not it. This is not it. Please show me where I need to be because this is not it. And I heard the words audibly in my ears come out of her. And when I heard those words, I paid attention to it. And a couple of weeks later, one of my family members, he said, man, I need you to take a look at a video. It's this pastor that's online, and it, it, he's just, he reminds me a lot of, of you in the sense of your passion. And I sat down, and he put the video on it. To this day, I still can't find that video, but it was of Pastor. And Pastor, in that video, you echo words, and, but the main thing I remembered hearing you say was, come out of her. Come out of her, my people. But saints, the, wor the words that I heard Pastor Dow say in that video... That was the audible word, same voice, same everything. It was Pastor Charles Dow Jr. that said, come out of her. I was so fearful when I heard that. I told my cousin, I literally backed up from the computer, said, hey, uh, I got some things I need to do. I remembered the, the YouTube page, and it was a couple weeks later that I started little by little listening to Pastor Dow. And so... I was list I, I'd begun to listen to the ministry, and this is before Mother had her accident and was able to move around the house with no problem. And I remember I was at my desk in the living room, and she was coming down the steps. And I, I was playing some things at Pastor, and she came down the steps. And the next thing I know, she was about right here. And she said, who is that? And I said, oh, well, that's, that's Pastor Dow. She said, that man speaks truth. And from that point on, mother has been listening to pastor faithfully. All of the questions that she ever had when she was confused in Christianity, pastor has answered those questions. And she is serving and loving the most high more than probably even me at times. But I know more than anything that because of pastor Dow, I used to always say, 
that if anybody on this earth in my family deserved to see the kingdom, it was her. And because of Pastor Dow and his voice, she will. So I want to thank all the saints for everything you do since I've been bringing her here. And another special shout out to Brother Mike number eight and his family. We got a lot of mics in this, in this ministry. But he, had just, he and his family had just come to the ministry and were, were fellowshipping with us with the assembly there in Columbus. And on September 13th, we almost lost Mother Beasley to, to a slight stroke. But they were there. They showed the love of Yah, even though they were new. They didn't, they didn't understand a whole lot, but they were there all the, all the time. Whatever I needed, whenever I needed it, they were there. And that's the love of Yah and his people. And I thank all of Yah's people, whether you're here, in the, here right here, or you're out there, I thank you. Because it, it takes a lot. But all of your prayers and all of your love is helping me to keep her, keep her strong and keep her moving on and on so she can be here for however long the Father will have her. Hallelujah. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. I acknowledge Yahweh as my creator, Yeshua as my master, and Deacon as my covering. I was in line with something on my mind that I wanted to share, but something else is just burning in me to share, right? And that's pretty common. Um, I testify first and foremost of the power of this ministry where the women are very honored by the men and their respect, and the women revere the men. Uh, nowhere else on earth, I know that's happening. I, um, I had thought that I had testified of this before, so again, um, as a woman not having children, it's very tormenting. It is a reproach to be what you would believe barren. And I heard those voices. You've heard the story of Pastor laying his hands on me in order for me to conceive, and now my third is on the way. That's very powerful. But I had to share that because there is nowhere else on earth you will find that will bring forth a seed in a woman. No, no. Without the power of Yah, through his man of Yah, and I thank you for extending our family pastor through the power of Yeshua. But I wanted to testify of the overcoming uh, internally of a rebellious heart. I had not count the cost that it would take to walk the walk, and many don't. I had thought that the rebellious we're the ones that flee, that can't stand, that can't endure, that don't go on with us. So when you're showed in a very intimate and personal way that you are the rebellious Israelite that the Father is speaking of, it's very powerful, very humbling. So I testify of how high he can take you, how much more anointing you can receive just through that admittance on a very personal level. And I, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, as he gathers his remnant, which he's doing, that we will come together in a straight way, and that we will say that we know what it's like to be chastened as a bullock that did not know the yoke and was not accustomed to the yoke. And so I thank him for the yoke because when you are his, you can't leave it. And if you were not his, you would. And if there were somewhere else to go, you would. But you can't flee his yoke. And so when you just submit and obey, he will reward you. Shalom. Um, I was sitting in my chair listening to multiple people testify. And in my spirit, I said, okay, I need to testify. And then I sat there and I said, well, what am I going to say? It's not going to sound as good as everybody else's. <laughs> I said, kept sitting there. And I looked back at Pastor and I said, 
hell with this. I'm getting up. So <laughs> here I am. Um, I just give honor to the Father and give honor to my husband and pastor. And um, I'm just thankful to be here. Um, came a long way to get here. And um, the Father's just been so good. I remember um, we lived in a house and it had a basement, and my husband was down there. I just heard some crazy man screaming and <laughs> I was in my room and I worked 14 hour days, seven days a week so I'm like I can't sleep all I can hear is this man screaming I don't know if I'm actually hearing him or if it's just in my mind you know so <laughs> one day I went to the steps and I said baby can you turn that down and so he turned it down just a little bit and it wasn't enough and <laughs> so <laughs> I shut the door and I just for some reason couldn't get this man's voice out of my head. He's just screaming and hollering about how wicked women are and how jacked up we are and you know. And so, you know, the more I heard it, the more I just got pissed off and I didn't know why I was mad. Every day I woke up pissed off. <laughs> so the more mad I got, the more I looked at my husband as if he was crazy. I literally thought wow, he's done smoked too many blunts like this. <laughs> it's <just laughs> crazy. So uh, as time went on, you know, uh, he found, when he found Pastor, you know, he listened to him nightly, video after video, video after video. And so I'm like, okay, this is going to be a phase. And so it came time for the first holiday, whatever it was, and Freeman said, we're not keeping, I'm not keeping any holiday from now on, period. You want to keep it, you can keep it somewhere else, you ain't keeping it here. So I looked at him and I said, wow, okay. I think 4th of, Ju 4th of July came, no fireworks. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the next holiday came, I think, uh, no, um, Thanksgiving maybe, and so I said, are we really not gonna do this? He said, hell no, we're not doing this. And I said, Okay, so he said, okay, if you want to do it that bad, you go to your mom's house, but we are not doing it here. We're not bringing no damn Christmas tree, so get it out of your spirit now. <laughs> and so I went to my mom's on Thanksgiving, and I was down there, and I said she was trying to, you know, feed us food. And for some reason, I, I didn't understand what was going on, and I kept hearing, you want to be at home with your husband. This is all you've ever wanted in life was to be loved, to have have a family and you have it and but you're here so I left I went home and I said the hell with Christmas <laughs> the hell with these holidays I want to just see what this screaming man's talking about so I sat down and service was on and here goes this crazy man talking about uh, men having multiple wives. And I'm like, well, damn, I done spent all these years wanting Freeman all to myself and come to find out I'm going to eventually have to share them. Oh, no, I don't think I could do it. So I looked at Freeman and I said, are you really going to listen to this? And he told me to shut up. <laughs> and if I didn't want to listen to it, I could leave the room, but he was going to listen to it. So for some reason, I stayed there, <laughs> and I continued to listen. So the more pastor talked about um, the women being uh, more wicked than uh, the man and all his wickedness, um, the more time that just went on, I was able to see, okay, I'm not wicked. Freeman's wicked. He's the one that did this. He did that. I mean, every time I turn around, he's mad. He's just upset. He's this. And then the more I did that, the more in my spirit I was like, wait a minute, I did that. Wait a minute, he's mad because I did this. Wait a minute, he's upset because I won't shut up. He's upset because I won't do what he says. So I just kept listening and kept listening, and the more time passed, I just continued to like what Pastor was saying. I mean, he was tearing me down. I, I said I needed galls and everything to keep me from bleeding out because it was just so hard to listen to it. But... The more I've listened, the more it's blessed me, the more it's blessed my husband's home. Um, as many of the sisters said, um, the peace that continues to come, the more I just shut the hell up. So, <laughs> um, 
I'm just thankful to be here, and I'm blessed to have all of your sisters and all of your brothers, and I just thank you for your uh, for enduring me as I continue to die out. And as Tomas said, I just want to make it, and I'm going to do whatever I got to do and continue to, to die. And if I got to get beat down to get there, I just hope that my sisters stand by me and beat me down and, and help me get there. And so I love you all. I just bless the Most High, and I bless my husband and pastor. Thank you all. Bless you. Hallelujah. Well, I, my intent, like everyone else, I'm sure, was not to come up here and cast shade on the devil, but uh, so be it, because whenever he's glorified, that's what makes all the difference right there, and things are what they are. Um, one of the things that, you know, that I came to know about myself in this ministry was kind of like obtaining a wife. I didn't need a wife for cooking. I could already cook. I could do my own laundry. I could clean my own house. I needed to help me. Well, when I was coming this way, partially by that crazy man, Mother Bullock, <laughs> referred to, he had things I needed to hear at the time. That was great. But I never uh, had a personal witness in my spirit about who was going to disciple me. I'm a free agent. I'm out there on my own. I'm by myself. I'm doing quite nearly perfect. Thank you. Uh, but one day, as I was uh, entertaining myself and writing and whatnot, I heard this voice, and I thank Yah that he said, My sheep shall know my voice, and to another shepherd they will not hearken. Well, that voice just told me, mentioned this man by name. And what was I lacking? I'd been to two Bible schools, been to seminary. What can I, you know, who can tell me anything that I don't already know, right? But I was mainly lacking the most important thing that I have learned since I've been here. And that thing is discipleship. S submitting yourself, coming in under the covering and the authority of a man. Makes you vulnerable. You know, you know I mean, you know, but uh, it was necessary. It was necessary to people that are out there. It is necessary for you to be discipled. Now, that doesn't mean somebody holds your hand constantly and, and whatnot, but that you yield your soul to the soul that the one Yah has put in authority, and then you become a benefactor and a partaker of the spirituality of that person and the blessing of Yah. So... Anyway, that's how I came to be. I did not know this man, but I heard the voice tell me and mention him by name. And I got quiet because I hadn't heard that voice in a while. So when I heard it, all of a sudden, I got quiet. didn't say anything. And it's been uh, a rewarding experience in my life uh, that... I would not trade for the world or anything that is in the world uh, because peace and experience of discipleship is worth more than anything out there. And I just want to thank him. I want to thank Yah first and foremost for leading me to Pastor Dow, my brothers or helpers along the way. And uh, But I want to thank him because Yah would not have chosen him for discipleship unless there was honesty and true, genuine love for the Father dwelling in that person. That's why he's where he's at today. Years ago, I told him, I said, you are about to rise 
above all of the men that you have ever been around. And I see that happening today. He's being brought out into the forefront. This is the working of Yah. It is his handiwork. It's marvelous in my eyes. And uh, I just want to thank the Most High Yah for bringing his people Israel to a shepherd. Maybe, maybe not the only one, but to a shepherd that is going to complete the mission and fulfill the will of Yah in his life and in the lives of other people. So I just want to praise Yah and thank you for that. I do bless you always. Hallelujah. Shalom, family. Um, I do want to testify of the Father. Um, he brought me here through my husband, which is uh, Brother Charlos, who is uh, Brother JC's brother, who is also connected to his wife, Carolina. Um, Carolina has been there for me since day one. She, <laughs> she never let, every time I called her, she was there. Um, and if she didn't answer the phone, um, she called me back. <laughs> I remember I used to call her and say, Charlos did this and Charlos did that and I don't understand. And she would always say, well, what did you do? You know? <laughs> and I'd be like, you right, you know, I would be upset, but she, you know, she told me the truth. Um, I didn't, I wasn't searching for anything. I wasn't searching for the Father at all, but he has brought me here and he has blessed me with the beautiful intermediate family, which um, earlier last year we spent almost a year staying with one another and that itself was an experience that I wouldn't, whew, it, was, it was something, but it was beautiful for us to go through. We got to really see each other um, and know ourselves as well and how wicked you can go in bitterness We wicked. We really wicked, and the Father, he'll, he'll wait. He'll see how long you'll go in that bitterness towards your sister. And uh, I thank the Father for all he has done for me. Every time, the Father's so faithful. <laughs> Every time I ask for something, you know, I go to the Father, and he's always hearing me. He answers me so swiftly. When I ask him for something, he has so much favor towards me, and I don't understand why sometimes I ask him, why you got so much favor with me? I don't understand. Because I know where I came from. I know how wicked I was, but he ain't looking at that. He has blessed me with so much zeal and so much desire and strength to serve him. And I ain't going to let nobody stop me from serving him. <laughs> My husband, he deals with me so much. He, he's a good man. He's a man of integrity. He's very young. But he chose to take on the load of me and my quail. And he's just, he's been there for me all the way. And no, he didn't get it perfect right at the beginning, but I wasn't perfect neither. And as he learned, he grew. And I had to learn to, you know, accept that he's not going to get it like that, you know. My husband, he's a good man. He, he, takes, he takes care of me and my son. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And um, Pastor, I remember one day, that day I seen you in Walmart, um, it was me and Sister Larry E.L. that I seen you. I had Jeremiah in my hand. And I was like, that's Pastor. And I was so excited. I waved at you. But the thing that I remember was the spirit. You turned and you waved, but I seen the spirit. I said, that's Jesus. That's, that, you know, I like the spirit. I, I do. I was <laughs> I'll never forget that moment. I'll never forget it. Because I knew that you, you, got, you got the Father Spirit in you. And it's radiating. It was radiating. 
it, I just I thank you, Pastor, for telling us the truth. And it hurt, but it's the truth. You know, us women wicked, Pastor. <laughs> But sisters, you know, keep on striving. We're going we gonna to get it. But bless y'all family. I thank the Father for all that he's continuing to do. And as we grow, I thank Jesus for being my master and choosing me. Hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. As I sat on my seat, uh, the enemy gave me every excuse on why not to get up to say anything. But I had to get up anyways. Uh, I thank the Most High, and I thank my husband, and I thank this ministry, because I stand before you, a woman that has been forgiven much. I was like, sister to me, when I came here, I was saved already. I didn't need to be saved. When I heard about this ministry, I was already saved. I was walking with uh, that grand old church of God in Christ. I was a licensed evangelist missionary. I was walking with my husband that was a licensed elder in the church and we were running and we were on fire and we were saved and we were on our way and I was going to prepare for the rapture to come get me. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was already already there and, and my husband came and he started to ask me questions and I always had a few questions in my mind I I was dealing with and and I just couldn't get the answers to I said father they were so you were so persecuted but I don't see that persecution I don't see it walking this way it's so broad but you said your way is narrow I don't I don't understand uh, why it is that that there was so much persecution that the father endured, but I didn't see it where I was. And I remember my husband did a black history program and he started learning about the different ways of, of these Hebrew people. And I said, oh, father, I don't, I don't know about all this information he's given, but I'll listen, you know, and I, and, I just stayed quiet and I just I just prayed uh, on my own and I, I remember the prayer that I said and I said, Father, I said, uh, if he's wrong, show him he's wrong. I said, but if I'm wrong, show me I'm wrong. And he showed me and he opened my eyes to be able to see what it was that my husband saw and I realized that I was a rich undone. And I realized how much I was getting forgiven just by being able to understand who the Father really was. I knew, I knew one thing when I was walking the way that I was walking. I said, I may be saved, I may be saved, I may be saved walking this way, but I want to be a good wife. And I want to be a good mother. And I didn't see it. And I walked in that church every day for 10 plus years. And I grew up, my, my, my father was a pastor. I mean, my father was a preacher. He started out a deacon and he, was a, and he came to be a preacher. And that's all I knew all my life. I remember my father had a picture of me three months old, he's holding me in an Easter dress. That's all I know, I knew I knew God that way. And my husband, who's a, whose father was a pastor, his brother was a pastor, and his other brother was a youth pastor, and his sister was the wife of a pastor. And all I knew was that, I knew that, I knew that God, I knew that Jesus, I knew that way, I knew that walk. 
And so I was saved in that walk and I was ready to die in that walk because I was that convinced that I was right. And they lied to me. And I realized how much they lied to me. And it hit me. And when it hit me, I said, where, where am I going to go from here? And my husband said, there's a way. <laughs> there's a way. There's a man. And he's telling the truth. And it's so true when Pastor said that the Father chose us. <laughs> And he chose to show us where to go, and he chose to show us which way to do it. And he chose us, not us choosing him. He, we didn't choose him. We choose these churches. We go and we walk in and out of these buildings, and I'm walking in and out of these buildings, and I'm seeing these women, and I'm seeing this way and this walk that is so correct. But I don't feel like a good wife, and I don't feel like a good mother, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why I don't see any examples. And one day I was sitting and I was watching past, and I was halfway listening because I didn't understand this man and why he was talking about this map and all these different tribes and all this different stuff that was going on. I was so confused and. And um, one day I was looking and I was, and I saw the praise team was up here. And I said, Father, I need an example of a, of a righteous woman. And he said, they're your examples right there. And that's what drove me uh, to this ministry. And I love Pastor. And he showed me the way and he took away all my excuses on everything and every way that I thought was right, and when he took away my excuses, I was forgiven much. I was forgiven so much. I dropped so much weight, and it had nothing to do with me, but it had everything to do with the yacht that was inside the pastor that took away every excuse that I had. I was so fearful coming to this ministry. I had asthma that put me in the hospital every year because I was so fearful of all the different things that happened. And like I said, I was forgiven much. I was forgiven so much. And I said, I can't stand here and I can't stay this way anymore. I can't sit on this seat and not say nothing about how far that the Father has brought me and how much that the Father has done for me. Because there's going to be some woman that realize how much she's forgiven just by me being able to open my mouth and say, I had, I had an extra 75 pounds on me that the pastor took away all my excuses on why I wasn't losing. And I learned how to lose it. And I woke up and I would be so so much that I couldn't breathe. I couldn't take in a deep breath. I had to go to the hospital just for them to shoot me up with steroids to be able to take a deep breath every March of every year. No pump would be able to open my lungs for me to be able to breathe hard enough. My husband would take me to the hospital year after year and I was forgiven and now I could breathe. And because of that, I came to this ministry and they did all that for me. I stood in that Christian church and I worked hard and I worked hard and we were so on fire for 10 plus years. And when we walked away, not one person even gave a phone call to say, what happened to you? Why are you not here no more? Why are you not walking this way no more? Why aren't you even coming to church? Not one, not one woman picked up the phone call and said, my sister, how you been? What's going on with you? Why are you not walking this way no more? Why haven't I seen you? I showed up every Sunday, ready to work, ready to work for the Father. 
And when we walked away from that ministry, no one even bothered to give a phone call. But when I came to this ministry, there were so many women that I walked right through the door and they embraced me. As soon as I walked into the door and they became my sisters and, and they became my, my brothers and they became my family. And I thank y'all for that. Hallelujah. Bless y'all. Um, hallelujah. I just want to give honor to the Most High for his faithfulness. I just wanted to come up here just to just be brief and just thank the Most High because I know that I was lost and I did not know who I was. And what I thought I was, I didn't even know how to be that. And I'm just thankful that out of all my life, which I'm still young, thank the most high, but out of all my life, I live following. And everybody that I was following, I was following their transgressions and iniquity. And just knowing that the devil was just having his way with me. And I didn't have no care about salvation, even though I was following the traditions of my family and everything. Nothing changed me. I wasn't growing. I was still, I'm still young, but I didn't have anybody teaching me, molding me or shaping me to be a woman, you know? I was wicked and um, rebellious, but I've always been a follower. So I'm thankful that the Most High found me and that he gave me my husband to follow him and to serve him because mm -mm -mm. I've never been passionate about anything. I never had nothing. Cause I, didn't, I wasn't anybody. I didn't have anything to be passionate for. I, didn't have, I wasn't zealous about anything. And it's like everything that my husband is, is the most high showing me how to just go in for what you believe and knowing that what you believe is worth living for, worth dying for, worth giving up everything for. And I'm a mother, you know, and I'm thankful to be able to have something to put in other than just something that I picked up along the way, just trying to be a part of something, anybody, anything, and the devil just loves that, but I'm just testifying that he is a liar. Yeah. He is a liar, and I'm just so grateful for family, um, the saints and the sisters and the mothers, and straightway, because it's been coming up lately from the elders that we don't really know what we have in front of us. We don't really know, we don't really know that everything that's taking place is, whew, it's really the most high. It's really the word right before our face and we in the midst of his people. And I'm testifying that I'm a part of his people and that we are the people that inherit, we are inheriting his promises from the beginning. And without straightway, we would not have that. We would not have that. And so that's what I want to testify, that as a follower of my husband now, and him following Pastor Dow, and us following this ministry, that 
of the people that are going to inherit the promises of the Most High because of their patience and because of their faith and their long suffering, all that they've done, we can imitate them now. We can imitate the righteous. And that's just my testifying because how, no matter how wicked that I am and that I was and rebellious, I still wanted something to follow. And so I'm thankful that the Most High gave me a righteous man to follow. Hallelujah. Y'all bless you, saints. Um, I just want to um, testify that Yahweh lives. He really does. He lives. Uh, I'm 34. I had a life, a long life of darkness. You couldn't even see a beacon of light. Till today, now, five years later, since I've been in this walk. And my sister Iris brought a video of pastor to my house. And she put him on, and he had a gun, and he's sitting there, you know, this is what's going on in the world, you know, do this, do that. And I'm watching him, and I'm like, this man, military style. Like, I feel like doing 50 push-ups right now. <laughs> That's what I was saying. So I'm listening to him. Weeks pass. She comes back, and he does teachings. And I'm like, she goes, I need you to listen to it to discern what's going on. So I listen to him, and I'm just paying attention. And all that came out of my spirit was, he has the whole package. Everything else was deleted. He had the whole package. And so from that point on, five years later, here I am. And Pastor, you have been a great help to me. You have been the father that I've never had. If I had the words on this earth to describe the things that you do, further this for our Elohim. They don't exist here. They just don't. My words are small. They couldn't, they just couldn't. It wouldn't do enough. It's like trying to say thank you a thousand times and you know it's not enough to Elohim. Knowing that I say this to you, I know that it's for him. There's no mistake in that. Elder Rufus, you have been a great help to my husband over there. To me, I was afraid of people. My life was so dark and damaged by human race that I could not see you clear. I couldn't even see you as human beings. It took a while. Because when you're an abandoned child and your mother doesn't care, your dad doesn't care, the world will treat you like you ain't nothing. It will drag you, tear you to pieces and expect for you to glue yourself back. Today, I stand and I keep my eyes on all of you brothers because when I watch you and I watch your love with one another, I want our sisters to get to that point. I want our sisters to get to that point. I have four natural sisters. We took baths together. We ate at the same table. We went through the same struggles and they're not here. They're not here. You are. I don't have time to be jealous of anybody or had envy. I only have time to grow in his love. And when I found it, I embraced it and I ain't letting it go. Do you understand? I wake up with joy every morning. Everybody laughs at me. My husband says, because I look funny. That's what he says. He goes, they laugh at you because you look funny. They ain't laughing with you, they laughing at you. Because I'm, so, I'm just so happy all the time. I don't speak a lot, but I am a very happy person because I love being amongst all of you. I love just watching all of you. When I watch all of you, I see Yahweh. I see his very word living. When I say he lives, he lives. He lives. He lives. Get it together. He lives. And I love him for it. And I love you, Father. I 
I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, I just love y'all and I bless y'all. And Father, you are worthy of all praises. You are the joy of my life. You are the song of my praises and I glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bye, Shalom, Saints. Man, that's a lot of powerful testimonies around here. Whew. A lot of hard, quite hard to follow, I say. But I'd like to give thanks to Yah, thanks to Jesus for healing, for deliverance. Hallelujah. Brought me through so much in my life. Uh, started out during life. Uh, uh, I was actually adopted by my grandmother and grandfather. Um, lived a sheltered life mainly, um, not really knowing how to um, deal with interactions between people, um, wanting to love and be loved, um, just through different experiences. Uh, every time I gain a new skill, I'd brag about it just to feel, just to try to feel accepted. Um, and yeah, I got a, got a few kicks and laughs in school. Yeah. Most of the time laughing at me, but hey, hey, you live, live and let learn. But uh, after I had gotten out of school, uh, thought about going to college and uh, blew that off. But uh, so I went ahead and decided to enter the workforce, go to work, uh, actually at the prison. Uh, I went throughout the prison. I uh, I went and. Uh, I was, I found work in Texas death row, uh, being able to see the extreme side of things, people who were facing death, who had nothing to live for, they thought. So they clung on to everything that they could, what faith it was, whatever relief, belief or religion it was. Um, well, growing up through my life, I had uh, grown up in Christianity, um, been indoctrinated and all that. But it felt empty. And just seeing the, the different beliefs of the prisoners, it's like, hell, hold on. They have rituals. They have rules that they adhere to. What about me? And then just seeing all that, it's like it felt like I was in a box in terms of belief and all, uh, just everything I've been reared up in. So I just went back, and I always remembered from my childhood uh, there was one missionary who came to the church I was at and uh, preached Romans 11. You're, you're grafted in uh, a wild olive tree into the uh, main house of Israel. Well, seeing all that and remembering, okay, as a Christian, we follow the words of Jesus, right? Okay, so I'll read my Bible. I'll read the New Testament. See what he said. I'll, everything Jesus said, I'll do. Well, I, I went ahead and I started seeing a little improvement in my life. And then it came to, if you have me, and he said, I remember, stuck to me. If you do not forgive your brother, you have no forgiveness in heaven, or with me. After that, I started forgiving everyone I could, everyone I could think of. And I'd finally, it led to actually getting deliverance right there on Texas death row. The first spirit was on forgiveness. I mean, I started bawling and squalling on the run, and I couldn't, it's like, it boggled my mind. I couldn't control myself. I couldn't stop sobbing and crying. But it felt like I had a little more clarity of mind. I, I wanted more of that. So I decided to keep, keep reading, keep studying. And when I read all the way just through the New Testament, all the way to when I hit Revelation, I saw the 12 tribes, how they come in. 12,000 of Jacob, 12,000 12, of uh, Judah, 12,000 of each one of the tribes. I said, Father, I want to be a part of your remnant. I want to be a part of Yisrael to help them at least, if not be a part of the core. Please. And after that, I prayed strongly for that. And he just, while on YouTube one day, I ran across one of pastor videos talking about silver, believe it or not. And on, beyond that, uh, I started seeing video after video after video, just couldn't get enough of it. 
Anyway, um, long story short, I called, called in a Block Talk radio, and uh, he put me in touch with Ellen Mitchell and uh, Brother Greg. And yes, I've had a bunch of ups and downs. Um, actually, I left the prison, but I praise you I, through all the trials and tribulations, I'm now actually making as much as I made even back then now. And I'm actually being able to help the saints now instead of being uh, trying to fulfill my own lusts. Um, back in 2013, the first time y'all saw me, I was about 280 pounds. Um, through those trials and tribulations and helping me to overcome, I have dropped significantly over 50 pounds. Um, and on that, even working with uh, Brother Rich and his wife, um, reeling things that I had been like generational curses and even how pastor was uh, teaching, bringing it all together, I've been able to uh, be able to clear my mind because I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and um, ADD. Just being able to have a clear mind, I praise Yah that each day that I can serve him with full mind, spirit, and body. Glory, hallelujah to the king. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, saints. Bless y'all. Uh, Y'all's been so good to me. There's no way I could sit and not have this opportunity to say thank you. Uh, I'm so grateful. I guess I'll, I'll start with finding Pastor Dowell on the internet. On the internet, after work, I saw this pastor with a gun in his hand. That's my kind of pastor. <laughs> That's my kind of pastor. I, I clicked on that video, but lo and behold, it was to change my life forever. I clicked on that video hours later, days later, weeks later, months later. Only thing I could think of was this man is a radical. <laughs> he was. I, he, I still think he's a radical, but a radical for Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, he mentioned that he was coming to Tampa, Florida. We are going to see this man. We went to see him, and it was a blessing to my family. At the time, we, me and my wife, we were married for five years at the time, and couldn't understand it. We didn't try to, or we didn't try not to have a child, but we weren't pregnant yet. And pastor baptized us, and it was that year she conceived. I didn't understand it, but now today I do. I realize that the Father didn't want my children to be brought up in the world. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Now, we got three sons. I have three sons. We averaging a child a year right now, so uh, I'm grateful. I, I'm, I'm truly grateful. I think about this ministry and, and what it's done what it's done for me as a man pastor can't say enough of how you've strengthened me as a man how to walk in my role and I wear it comfortably too I enjoy that mother Carol all the other sisters can't say enough about how you have uh, shown my wife how to walk in her role and how she enjoys it to the mothers I take my hat off to you you have a you have a very important task in front of you and raising our future generation and raising a righteous seed to the Father. It's not an easy task, so with that I say, uh, walk in true strength, look at the examples in front of you, and raise a righteous generation for the Father. With or without us, the Father will have a righteous seed. He will have a righteous seed, and I'd like to be a part of that. I will do everything I can to be a part of that. Pastor, you done done so many dangerous things, jumped out of airplanes, been shot at, for the world's sake. So I could only imagine what you would do for me and our brothers and sisters here. I thank you, sir. I take my hat off to you. I'm grateful for your walk with the Father because it gives me an example of what I need to be towards the Father. 
I'm grateful for your sacrifice, the testimony, the conversation of your life that you live. It gives me an example, and I'm gratefully appreciative of all the men, women, and the children who stand behind him here in this ministry. It's, it's such strength. I, I, watch, I watch Brother Rich <laughs> night after night after night, hours on end, lifting boxes. I was like, Jesus, Brother Rich, you probably shouldn't be lifting that box, man, but no complaints. He just continues and continues and continues. The saints here, their life is a true example of sacrifice, and I'm grateful for that sacrifice. It gives me an example. It gives my family an example on what we need to be, and what we need to do. Yes, the word says he'll, he never, he'll, you'll never see the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread, and that is the truth. We, it has not always been, you know, comfortable living for us. We've seen rough times. We've seen some real rough times, and I say that with complete humbleness and that it has allowed me to give unconditionally. I could, I could give no problem because I know that the Father, His Spirit is in our pastor and I know that the Father, He'll never leave us forsaken. He'll, he'll never leave us forsaken. I, I have no worries or any issues on how we will be taken care of because I know He'll provide for us continuously. So I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful for my brothers and sisters here. I'm grateful for the elders. I'm grateful for the work y'all put into the ministry. I'm grateful for the support that you give to our pastor. Uh, I truly appreciate that. One more thing, the, the sacrifice that is shown in this ministry is sometimes unbelieving. And I remember last year, me and some of the brothers from Texas, we were in a hole digging a septic tank. And I was like, man, we were slaving out there for hours in the hot sun just so the saints could be able to go number two. <laughs> just so y'all could take, sit on the toilet and use the restroom, they were out there slaving and working hard. And I was, I was grateful to be a part of that. Um, I thank y'all. I love y'all very much. I'm grateful to the Father for y'all. And I'll do anything, my true brothers and sisters, to serve you, be a servant and love you as I should. The person you see before you today is not the same person I used to be. I came in very hard hearted and I knew it after seeing the people here. Um, whenever, like three years before coming in, my mom died and I left a hole and I didn't know how to fill that hole correctly. And I would be, I, I like felt really isolated, just alone, and I built walls up and kept people out. And then coming here, the day I got baptized in January, I thought that, okay, I could just ask for a towel and a skirt, and I'll just be sent to the bathroom where it's kind of cold, and I'll just change real quick after getting baptized. But no, Sister Barb, she brought me in, and she put me, she started a fire. She gave me a dry skirt, a dry towel. And then whenever I got done drying off and sat in her living room, she made sure I understood exactly what the baptism is and if I'd ever heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I had heard of it, but I didn't know it existed. And she made sure I understood it. And the Father put her there to be able to show the, just show more of the love that these people have, that his people have. And she had only known me for maybe a month or two, and she invited me over to her house. She said, you can come anytime. And I knew in my heart that I had to go. I had to go back. I had to spend a few days. I had to before going back to college, just to prove to myself that this was real. These people are who they say they are. And I'm so glad that I listened to that in my spirit and stayed. And that's all I have. <laughs> testify to y'all's goodness and his faithfulness. I want to testify to his um, love and mercy and patience and 
kindness that he's had towards me and all of us. And um, when I came this way, I saw something I never saw out there in the world. Um, men working hard to provide for um, the men, for the women and children. Um, in this ministry, I've had a lot of security that I never had in the world, a lot of peace. Um, I'm thankful to the Most High for, the, um, for our pastor, our leader, who has been a father to me, as well as my husband, who has been a great provider and protector. And um, I'm thankful for the example that um, I see in the men. Um, they're an honorable and great representation of who um, the Messiah is to the assembly, and it has taught me. And I have also um, been very grateful and thankful for the sisters and the mothers and the women that Yahweh has put in my life, who have been great examples to me. Um, and I, I'm also thankful for the sisterhood. Um, I've never seen a women, a group of women that uh, strive for holiness and who have a genuine desire to please the Father and to grow and to let go of all wickedness to be the women that Yahweh has called us to be. I'm very thankful for my sisters and I love them all because uh, I see the love, I see the care, I see the desire to grow and I see the growth and I'm very thankful for that uh, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to be in my role to be a wife and a keeper at home and a mother and I praise the Father for that. Bless y'all saints. Um, I just remember coming this way. Hadassah and Sister D, they came in and I just remember the family calling me saying, what's up with them? They, they crazy. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So at the time I hadn't seen any of pastor videos. Then I did watch one and it wasn't too bad. So then I remember getting a call and they're like, hey, we're going the straight way. And I met up with Elder Bill. I mean, he just embraced me like he knew me for forever. Like I had just been his son for forever. And we drove up the straight way. I remember coming in here praying and I remember Brother Rich, I didn't know, you know, hey, you come here an hour before and pray. And I remember Brother Rich coming up to me like, hey man, you need to be doing what they doing. And everybody was praying, I was like, all right, cool. Then once I stopped praying, service was over, and then Pastor Dial coming up saying, so is it a cult? And I'm thinking, well, I ain't never say that, but okay. <laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> you know, it's, it's not, you know. But, uh, you know, I just got introduced to a lot of beautiful brothers and sisters, and especially Elder Roof. I mean, I learned a lot from him, you know, because, I mean, he's just a, a solid brother, you know. You definitely ain't going to go to him if you want your back stroked, you know what I mean? You, you're going to get it straight, you know, you're going to get it straight, and that's what we need. You know, coming from out there, you know, we were just taught so many things that wasn't true. It was just all the falsehood and just believing that you're something that you're not, and, you know, the, the, the norm was sin, and at the time, you didn't even know that it was wrong. You felt it was right, and so just seeing the examples from Pastor Dial and seeing the examples from all the brethren and, and, and the elders and just everybody. It was just love and embracing them. Seeing Mom Jennifer and Mother Carol and it was just amazing because I mean I never seen that before. You know Christianity never taught you that and I wasn't even a good Christian so it was like why not do this? You know what I mean? This, this is right. You know? And this is something that you can get fruit from. So I just praise the Father for meeting all y'all and, and, and just being here and just calling me to be a child to, and just I just love y'all and bless y'all praise y'all um before I came into faith for it um I was in, I was looking for the truth for the lip Look for the truth, um, like in a natural sense, um, I, um, through, I went through Egyptology, and, um, I met this guy, and, um, not essentially him, D.U.D., right, and I learned about, you know, 
Jesus Black, you know what I'm saying, older, Chad Lance Blade trading, stuff like that, right? And um he had me another D V D about um Illuminati stuff like that. So, um, you know, I know about the fool's poison, all that's poison, so um so I ran my fan told all about this, right? And if I was showing me, they ain't gonna get this. When I came in faith, years years later, my, you know, we get excited and um, you know, um you tell the truth spiritually they ain't gonna get that either. So I learned about say myself. So um I was searching, you know. And a year before I I saw pass down a video, I learned about, you know, Native American self that, you know, I learned all about that and you know, in twenty eleven and um I ran past the out about um Hell camping. Y'all heard hell camping, right? And um I knew it was fake, but I don't get on the same for my past, you know what I'm saying? So I had my Bible out and it was true. I ain't got fin at all. The spirit of truth law. He was going fishing, so um and uh, I'm I'll kept continuing on um, watching his videos. I don't worry about I'll continue watching videos and um I'll call in blog talk and you know Say shalom, man, you know, on this. Listen, you know, study and, you know, until, uh, you know, like, 2012, right? That Passover, right? You know, you know, I call him blog talk and, you know, asking I could come and, you know, visit and, you know, I'm saying, um, you know, I, you know, I'll, you know, you're excited, right? You, and, um, you know, and, um, and here he beat me, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and he and he did a video next day, you know, and he saved my life. Never, he saved my my life. You know what I'm saying? Cause I I was a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? I was prideful, arrogant. You know, and um, I ain't know that. And so I came here. Y'all remember I came I came here and um, I was you know, deserve me. You know, make sure it's right. You know what I'm saying? You know. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't want to be lied to. You know what I'm saying I ain't came for that. So um, <laughs> and after that, you know, I know there's a way right there. So um, now I'm here to stay. And Father brought me off from from sin. You know what I'm saying you know lies, a lot of lies, man. I just believe a lot of lies. Um, you know, like <laughs> I can be here all day testifying all day and. Uh, you know, um, I think passed out for everything. Cause while him, man, um, I ain't gonna be here. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing my thing, and um, I don't know. I'll be deceived. So, um, I here to stay. I ain't finished yet. You know what I'm saying? This is the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Finally having, finally having doing something. I had far having doing something. And um, I don't know what it is, but he having doing something. I just doing what he's telling me to do. I know my role, so that's. I know the sun's going to happen, you know, for my benefit. So I that, identify the body and that's, um, you know, just continue on the plow and not looking back. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to stay. I'm serious, right? I'm here to stay. It's on video. So um, I'll be a man of my words. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know I'm a man of a few words, so, you know. I'm an action. I'm about doing. You know what I'm saying? I like talking. I can be here all day talking, but um, if I don't do it, I'm a liar. You know what I'm saying? I'll be a hypocrite. Come on, man. So um, bless y'all here. I'm glad y'all brought me here to a true family. I thank Elder Rufus. I thank all the brothers and sisters. I thank you, Brother Ron, and everybody else. You know, Brother Freeman. You know, um. That's, I love them all, so I love y'all all, so bless y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Y'all is good, ain't these saints? Yes, sir. How y'all is good? I, I, just, I come to testify the goodness of the Most High. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. And he is real. It is real, um, saints. I got to tell you, you know, how can... I sit down in that seat, you know, with all that the Father's done for me, you know. I just look back at uh, just a few years back. I was lost, saints. I was literally lost. I thought I had it together. I really did. Just like many people that come, you know, that spoke before me, 
raised in the Christian church, you know, from, from, a, from a child. My granddad was a preacher. I used to love to go to the churches and do all these different things. And I thought I had it, you know, together. But I realized, man, you know, I was, I was lost. And, and when I, um, the Most High was, was showing me different things here and there, showing me, you know, holidays. What is this all for? Why do I have to buy gifts every so many months? Every other month I got to buy a gift. What is this all about? So he started showing me little things here and there, you know. What is it for? It doesn't mean nothing. So anyway, I, I uh, got to the point where uh, I, was, I was preaching in a Christian church, you know, preaching and I had this, this uh, I felt, I said, I got this calling on my life, you know. Uh, Father showed me something one morning while I was up praying and spending time with him. You know, the whole room around me just, just lit up and I was just focused on a certain passage of scripture. And from that point on, I was just burning. I had to study this word, I had to learn, I had to know more. So I went back to the church and I'm on fire now. And I'm, uh, I'm in there, but I'm not seeing, it's not making sense. What I'm reading in this book is not adding up to what I see. And I remember one day I sat on that front pew and I was just looking around. I was like, nah, this is not, this is not, this is not God's people. This, this is not them. It's so much hypocrisy. There were so many men that was just envious and jealous and just selfish, you know? And I was like, this ain't it. So I begin to pray every single day. Father, show me, show me the way. You know, show me, open up my understanding, because this is not it. And so as time went on, you know, um, he began to show me a little bit more here and there, just a little bit more. And I remember waking up uh, one week straight, like for like 2, two to 3 o'clock, between that time, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I would go use the bathroom. And I would, I would hear this in my mind, everything's about to change, your whole life is about to change. I'm like, what? Use the bathroom, went back to sleep. What that was, that felt weird. That was crazy. I don't know what that was. So it happened again, and it happened again. I was like, I don't know what that was. That's just weird. So anyway, as time progressed, I continued to pray that same prayer, that same prayer, you know. Show me the way. Show me. I, I need to understand. This stuff is not adding up, you know. And so eventually he showed me, you know, I, I preached that last sermon in the, in the Christian church, and this lady came up to me. She was like, um, so are you in uh, seminary? I said, no, ma'am, I'm not in seminary. She looked at me. I was like, no, I, I just didn't get the clearance to go. God just didn't give me the clearance. So she was like, I was like, yeah. So after that, I was like, that look on her face, it made me wonder why. So is that a prerequisite? Do I have to go to seminary? So anyway, I went home, and I started reading. I was like, the truth, I, I looked up, I typed in the truth behind seminary, and uh, Pastor Dow's video popped up, uh, seminary preachers. Man. I get into that video, he's sitting there, he got like a blue sweatshirt on, back when he used to do them in the, at the house there, and I'm watching this video, and I'm listening, I'm like, oh, here we go, none of the brother, one of these old self-righteous brothers, he read a couple books, this and that. <laughs> but I tell you what, man, I was just eating it up, I was loving it, it was feeding my soul, everything that he was talking about, and the one thing that got me, he said, you know what, you'll learn more in a few of my teachings than you would in a whole year of Christianity. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna take him up on that, you know? And I did that, and I went to, uh, I started, I think one of the first ones was Come Out of Her, My People, and I watched that. And that, that, was, that was one of the ones, and um, I didn't want to go back to church no more. And my wife was seeing all these different changes. She was like, dang, we going through another, per you, you following another person? I was like, yeah, man, we gotta, this is it right here. But anyway, I say all that to say this, all right? I'm just saying how good y'all is, because he's truly good. It was June 24th, all right? Um, I had to make a decision. I remember Pastor Dow was preaching. He was like, he's talking about the valley of decision. You know, we all got to make that decision. And it came to a point, I was listening to this one Hebrew camp, and I was listening to Pastor Dow. Pastor Dow was yelling and screaming and hollering. I was like, man, I like that, but he keep going off, he keep going off. But this guy over here, he's so structured. I like the videos. Oh, man, it's appeasing to, to that flesh. I want to be like that. I want to speak like that. I want to look like that. But then I kept going back to this yelling and screaming and hollering and tearing me up, right? So I remember June 24th, I had to make a decision, and I made that decision. And it's, uh, it's been six years now, and, and I'm glad I, I, I've, I made that choice, because I always, y'all hear me say this on the show, whenever I'm on, from time to time, I say that I'm so thankful that y'all brought me here, because I didn't have to go through all of these different channels just to get here. He brought me straight here, saints, to y'all's people. And when I actually came for that first gots, and I saw the way they were living, when, when I had an opportunity to, I already felt like I was a part of everybody, but when I had a chance to see the land, I saw the, the, the trailers, people might look at them and, and, and laugh, oh, they're living in trailers, ah, oh, 
That was beautiful to me. You know why? Because I saw it. You know, be content with such things as you have. And I saw people striving after the most high, not worrying about the materialistic things of the world. You know, so I'm so thankful y'all brought me here. And I always say that. And even this morning in my prayers, I say, thank you, Father, for bringing me this way. Thank you for uh, bringing me to your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah is truly good. And uh, one other thing I want to say to you, Pastor Dow, I greatly appreciate everything that you've done for me. Um, just your life of sacrifice. I've never said this openly. I, I figured maybe I'll just live and, 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 and you'll know that I'm with you. But however, I want to say this to you. I'm with you. I'm here with you in this thing. Hallelujah. You know, um, you've done so much. I, I can go on and on. I remember one time I was, I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, all the different things that I learned from you. I was like, man, it'd be so much if I try to jot it down. I said, let me just think, though. I've learned about uh, um, weapons. I, I didn't know much about weapons. My dad told me, no, you can't handle weapons. You don't do that. Learned about gardening, you know what I mean? Survival skills, taking care, being a real man, being a true man, not being afraid, you know what I mean? And, and all of these things that I've, I've learned from you, and I greatly appreciate every single thing, you know? Um, not only that, but all of the elders, you know, uh, Elder Becker, I thank you, Elder Rufus, Elder Austin, Elder Mitchell, you know, El um, Elder Felix, you know, Teacher Shane, Deacon Doug, everybody. I don't want to miss nobody. Um, all my brothers, you know, I've learned so much. But I'm so grateful that the Most High brought me here. I can't stress that enough, uh, Saints. Um, he's truly good. Um, he's truly, he's a deliverer. He's redeemed me. I mean, he's taken me from so far. I could just look back. And how I was just lost, lost in that world, you know what I mean? And so I'm ready to go higher. I'm ready to move forward, you know? I'm, I'm serious, you know, time out for the games and holding back and, and keeping that little part of self and just trying to know, to preserve that, know it's time to go forward and I'm ready to go. And I'm so thankful that the Most High, you know, chose me and he brought me this way. And I'm just so thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, bless you saints. Um, I just quickly wanted to say thank you to the lover of my soul because there was a time that I couldn't smile. It wasn't legit, it was a fabricated smile. Every day I woke up and I put on a face. Every day I had to fake it. Every day I had to pretend that I was a happy woman, a happy wife, a happy mom. I had to put on a show because that's what the church that I went to taught us. You, you know, you put on because it's nobody's business what's going on at home. You just come here and you serve God. You do your part, whether it be with the children's ministry, whatever ministry you're part of, but we don't want to hear what all's going on in your life. And so I, I, I grew up like that. I grew up faking a smile, and I, I was good at it, too. I could have gotten a medal, a reward for putting on um, putting on my nice clothes, my, do my hair, my makeup, and smile and pretend that I was just so content and happy. Everybody thought I was the happiest woman in the planet Earth. Everybody wanted to be like me, wanted to have my marriage, wanted to have the children that I had. They wanted my life because I was good at pretending. When I came here, I saw a pastor, and I saw the love affair that he had with the Most High, the way he served Jesus, the way that he gave of himself to the people to teach us the truth. And I saw true, genuine happiness, peace, and joy just oozing out of this man. And I said, I want that. I want what he has. I don't want to fake smiles anymore. I don't want to pretend that I'm happy. I want to be happy. And... I could testify this day that the Father saw me in that pit of discouragement and rejection, that pit of sin that I was in. Just like Psalms 40 says, he took me out of that pit. And he has ordered my steps. Ever since then, I strive. I strive to be his, completely giving myself to him because of the pure love that I see pastor give Jesus. He serves him with such purity of love, and I strive for that pureness in my heart, in my relationship. 
with the Messiah, with my soon coming King. And I love you all for putting up with me, for loving me more than I have known to love myself. And I praise the Father for pastor and the saints and ministry. Amen. Before I give my testimony, I'm going to repent. <laughs> because I sat back there and I come from a very prideful family. And I sat back there and I've been crying and listening to the testimonies and my eyes are puffed up. And I was like, I ain't going up there with these puffy eyes. You know, but the Father has been too good to me to worry about some puffy eyes. Hallelujah. I just want to thank the Most High for the family. I want to thank the Most High for Straightway, for all the brothers, the sisters, the mothers. You know, truly, you have been an example. Um, most of you know how I came about coming to Straightway. Um, sister Chester, our dear Sister Chester, who I miss very much. Um, I want to say I thank the Father. Um, sister Chester was the one that got me watching the videos. And I pretty, I, in my past life, I've been on my own since I was 16 years old, and I've experienced a lot and seen a lot. And I remember seeing a video with Pastor Dow, and he was just going off on women. I mean, he was like, oh, these heathen women, you yeah, Jezebel spirits. And I was like, you know, and I remember, you know, feeling bad. I was like, I ain't no Jezebel, you know, I ain't no Jezebel. I'm not no Jezebel. I can't help it that I have, my life was like this and I had to take care of myself. And the Father just wanted me to be healed from all of that, all that pain. And, you know, I was so used to, my, you know, y'all have heard the word mama's boys. You know, I was so used to so many mama's boys. You know, when I came to Straightway, I'm like, ain't no mama boys in this place. Hallelujah. <laughs> ain't no mama's boys. You hear me? If any of y'all had to deal with some mama's boys, y'all know what I'm talking about. How, so I just, I just thank the Father that is men here. And Pastor Dow, I just want to thank you because I've never really respected men because my father was never in my life. And the example of men that I did have in my life were not good men. So I, I want to thank you for your integrity and for telling us the truth. And, you know, I just had so much pride. And since I've been here, I thank the sisters that has ministered and helped me. And Sister Chester used to always say, Sister, that's a Jezebel spirit. I said, man, I got a lot of Jezebel spirits. <laughs> you know, that sister stayed on me about a Jezebel spirit. You know, and at first I would get upset because you don't want to hear it. Your flesh don't want to hear that. But I began to humble myself to the Most High because I wanted to change. Regardless if I could help how I got there, it didn't matter. I needed to change. And I wanted to say, Pastor Dow, thank you for being an example of a real man. And all the elders and the other brothers for just carrying yourself like men. I had to be a mother and a father raising my children, so I didn't know what role to play. It's hard to one minute be soft, and then the next minute you got to be hard and strong. You know, that's confusing. You know, and I want to say, Sister Carol, I'll call you Mother Carol because we're too close in age and you're my, you're my sister. But I want to thank you for being a good example of a humbling woman. You know, I used to look down on women that listen to everything the man tell them. I used to look down on the women that look, listen to everything a man tell them. Like, dang, she got a brain of her own, you know? And I, I didn't understand. That's because I didn't have any good men leading me. But when a righteous good man leads you, that's a blessing. And I want to say thank you for being an example of how to submit. You know, I would listen to Pastor Dow when I come, and this is no offense to Pastor Dow, but I would be like, some of the stuff he said with a pool pit, and Sister Carol just sits there. 
And I'd be like, oh my Lord, he gonna hear it when he got home if that was me. <laughs> but she, she just always carried herself so humble. And you have been a wonderful example. For a woman, there is no reason that any woman comes to this ministry, whatever issue she has. You are a wonderful example. There's other mothers that are wonderful example how to carry ourselves. And I thank the Father for teaching me that I can't make it to the kingdom if I don't know how to submit. So I thank God for the, the most high, for the mighty man of Yah. Hallelujah, that speaks the truth. I respect you so much, Pastor Dow. And I have never respected men like that. And I want to thank you for being an example. You humbled me to be able to come to the point that I can respect men. And I had never been there before. And I just want to thank you. And again, I thank Sister Carol because she's, I had both. I thank the Father that I had a chance to have an example of a righteous man, an example of a righteous woman. So I know my place now. I struggled so much with knowing my place, having to be both parents having to be strong and make the choices all by myself. And then knowing how to be that woman that's lying in the bed crying at night. You know, it was, it's, a, it's hard. <laughs> but I thank the Father for an example to know my place. And I thank y'all for a family. I thank y'all for the sisters that'll come and correct me. I know I'll be back there laughing and cutting up. I'll be trying y'all. Pastor, he, I'll be trying, Pastor. <laughs> but he keep it going and I just can't help it. <laughs> but I just, I just love y'all. I have never had a family. I, I was at the point in the Christian church and you know I was Sunday school teacher and because I love the children and I was Sunday school teacher and I you know, did whatever the church asked me to do to be a blessing because I always want to be a blessing. And I just remember watching the people, and I'm like, oh my goodness, something is missing. Something ain't right. I didn't see genuine love from the sisters and the brothers. You know, I, I didn't see that genuine love. You know, like, if you have a need, I never seen nobody say, okay, can I, how can I help? You know, I'll pray for you. Like Pastor just said, oh, I'm gonna pray for you. What's praying for me going to do right now? I'm in need right now. You know, I'm just saying, I, that's all I saw in the Christian church. I never seen, you know, people being genuinely loving each other. Or people lying to you, tell you they're going to do something, never do it. You know, I was tired of that. And before I came to Straightway and the Father even presented Straightway to me, I was at the point where I said, I just don't want to be in this world no more. If this is the way the saints are, is this what all I have to look forward to the rest of my life? I, Father, just take me. And she, probably three years later after that, Sister Chester came along. Hallelujah. And she presented me the straight way. Hallelujah. And I've just been blessed ever since. I, I thank the sisters that correct me in areas and speak to me and the mothers. I'm very thankful. I could take constructive criticism. <laughs> That's a blessing. To be able to be criticized constructively so you can change. Sometimes we don't see ourselves. You know, some things we have in us, or we think it's okay. We've been so messed up. You know, we think things are okay and it's not. But I just thank you for the wonderful example of me and all the brothers and elders. Ain't no mama boys in this place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I get praise today. Hallelujah. But what's beautiful about it is though they're not mama boys, they still know how to love a woman. Be gentle to the woman. That's a blessing. You know, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, sisters. Ain't y'all grateful ain't no mama boys in this place? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'm glad. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you because if you got a righteous man leading you, it shows us how to submit before the Father. I've learned since I've been here to either to how to even submit more to the Most High. Just watching the men, you know, be that guidance and that leading. And I'm thankful for that. Because I was so, you know, so jazzabelled out and having to be in control of everything. And there's a peace that comes with that. There's a peace that comes with being able to know that I don't have to be in control of everything all the time. And that I can trust the Father and be led by righteous men. Hallelujah. I'm very thankful for that. I just want y'all to be patient with me. I'm growing in grace. Hallelujah. And I'm striving to get to the kingdom. And anything I can do to be a blessing to, to you, Pastor, Sister Carol, anybody, if I can help, I just want you to know, just pray my strength. I'm there and I love the new family that I have. Hallelujah. I just want to thank the Father um, that many times when I know for myself, um, I've been in some very... Um, uh, dark, um, dark places in my mind, um, places that I know that I should not be, but it is true that he never leads nor forsakes, and I hold on to that, and um, when you have a genuine relationship with the Father, for him to truly comfort you and correct um, I'm grateful um, there was a, a time when I could not appreciate um, correction and I'm not saying that I'm just jumping and being all giddy when it happens every time now but um, as I grow in the walk um, I understand that it's needed and I thank the Father for his order I thank you, Father, for your order. It is so beautiful. And I'm, I'm grateful that he gives us heads because coming um, from the world, because I did come from Christianity, you don't appreciate being under authority. You don't appreciate that at all. And coming in the way I'm um, learning how we're supposed to be gives you a deep appreciation for it being under a head because I know for myself I can't I cannot lead me just learning about who we are as women in the book we cannot lead ourselves and I'm just so grateful for my head um my head Darusha that does everything that he knows how to lead and he's so patient and when he when he found out who he was I know all throughout our lives he will, when it's something that he grasps, something that he believed in, he's very, he holds tight to, he's very loyal. He's always been very loyal. And I knew that when he was serious about the father, I was like, if I don't get on board, I'm about to have to get out. And I've never heard that speech from my husband, but I'm gonna tell you, the father changes. He, he shapes and he molds our men and it is so beautiful the strength that he gives them and I'm grateful um, just just for being called a child of Yah and for being in this ministry and having a true family and just one more thing um, I'm grateful that when you when you really get serious about the father I pastor said um, when he when he came down to Georgia he he said, oh, now, he told one of the sisters, now you get to really experience what it's like to be an Israelite. And he told her, um, like, when she get married, you're really going to get to experience what it's like to be an Israelite. And I'm like, what does he mean? I've been married for, like, 16 years. What is he talking about? You finally get to experience what it means to be an Israelite. And so I just began to ponder on that and ponder on it. And um, like I said, when you get serious, when you, when you want to empty out everything that is not of him, he begins to replace that with more of his spirit and it it, it truly transforms it I, I get 
what it, I'm, what am I trying to say? I understand what it means to, to be transformed now, even if it's slow. And I'm just so grateful that the Father, he, he's, he's patient and he's long suffering. And I thank you, Father, for being long suffering. Thank you, Father, for being long suffering. you all saints Shabbat Shalom. I would like to uh, testify to Yahweh and restitution where as whenever my sister began hers I lost my mom at a very young age and I built up a really wall that for the last couple months I've been working myself through and I finally came to the tipping point last night and I need to, uh, whenever my dad uh, told me later down the road where he didn't know what speaking in tongues was, that my mother spoke in tongues before she passed away. She had an acute leukemia, bone marrow cancer, and they say that's one of the nastiest cancers you can ever get. It's a living hell. And even on her deathbed, she was telling us to keep reading, keep searching, keep striving. Even though this has happened to me, you can't lose faith. So later on down the road, my dad meets Tina, which now I need to drop calling her stepmom or by her first name because just from her background and what she has come from and what she has overcame, she was a single mother, husband never in the picture. And her seeing this submission to my father, I need to she has earned the title of mother to me. And being here and then with restitution also, my whole dad's side of the family doesn't want anything to do with me or my sister. They don't give a care that my sister will be married to a righteous Israelite man that will not do her wrong. And with restitution, I have now been given brothers. I've been given uncles for counsel. Brother Vernon. Brother Freeman. Brother D. Jerry. Uh, Deacon Bell, one of, I mean, some of the very few. I'm, I will keep striving. I am still jacked up, and I know I have so many more problems. And I need the Ruach. I need to keep striving for the Ruach. And I appreciate all of you. I love you all. Watch Rome. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Bless you all. Um, I'm thankful for my journey here. Um, it's been a been a quite a journey. Um, from what I can remember, I'm a, from a big family. I'm one of fourteen, um, somewhere up in the middle. And uh, as my wife said, I'm from a very religious family, you know, eight brothers, five of them preachers, two or three of them pastors, you know, so I, the religious stuff, I, I knew the religious stuff, but all that got torn down coming this way. Um, I remember my first time I, I had been searching, you know, searching, I told pastor a couple weeks ago, I had been searching, because some people say they got mad when they heard them, but I was the one searching for truth. I was the one searching for that light, you know, because I was void. And um, I called Edel Becker up, and he put me in contact with Edel Mitchell. I'll never forget the first time I met Edel Mitchell. He insulted me to my face at the dinner table. <laughs> he, he told me, and said, man, you, you dress like Soldier Boy. I mean, y'all younger folk know who that. He told me, you, you, you dress funny. You, you, you got to chill out with all that. And um, I said, yes, sir, yes, sir, just whatever. I just want to be a part you know, of the family. So um, time goes on. I come here. 
just like, 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 <laughs> like father, like son, pastor insults me. You don't know nothing. You know, you, you don't, you don't know nothing. He just rah, rah, rah. And the first time I ever actually hugged him, um, he was fussing at, uh, he was fussing at somebody. And I'm like, oh, geez, great. I get to meet him when he's mad, you know. <laughs> so he, <laughs> he rolled up in the mill. He kind of, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, hug him. So I'm just going to wait for him to, you know, cause, uh, you know, just first time here. But uh, he, he embraced me and uh, has been a father figure to me ever since. Um, uh, one of my favorite, my, one of my favorite moments uh, in time is here. So when I first got here, just in my spirit, I said, this is the closest you're going to get, you know, to heaven, you know, before, before I come. And so I, I know where I'm at, you know, Pastor, I know where I'm at. I know I hear the Father's voice, you know, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm, 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 I'm here to stay. And um, one, one uh, my favorite moments when he had dinner with me, my first time here. He had dinner with me, and it meant so much to me, just a simple dinner. Because I come from a place to where the bishop, you can't even get in the door if you don't pay $2,000 for a plate, for a piece of chicken, for some green beans and a roll about that big. You can't even get in the door, but for him to open, open his doors to me, yes ma'am, for him to open his doors up to me and, and embrace me, it's, it's been a wonderful journey here. And uh, my first time here, I was right there in the, in the top of the hill, you know, in the, um, in the little guest room there. And I was on my face for no reason. I don't know why. I'm bawling. I'm crying like a baby on my face on the floor. And I said, Father, if this is where you want me to be, if this is your people, if this is what I've been searching for all my life, show me, you know, you know sh show me, show me. And I'm just bawling and bawling. And before I left, I'm hugging all the brothers. I'm hugging all the elders. And I never forget, I hugged at a Becker, and I said, I don't want to leave. And he told me, he said, well, I'm pretty sure your wife and children miss you, so you might want to, you know. <laughs> he said, you might want to go back home. I'm pretty sure they miss you, too. But it, it was just the love that, that encamped me, and, and it's the love that, that still sticks with me, even to this day. And I'm so grateful, you know, for all my brothers, for all the elders, you know, um, Elder Rufus, Elder Mitchell, or Deacon. A pastor, you know, all you guys, I, I love you dearly. And my, and my, my wife, like she told you, we have to leave a church service. You know, my dad was a pastor, by the way. We have to leave a church service while my wife is having asthma attacks. Can't breathe. You know, we have to leave the church to go to the hospital to get healing. Mind you, pastors in there, elders, deacons, whatever you want to call it, all of them were, all of them were there in that service. Can't breathe, and I can set my watch to it. Okay, it's so about March. I can expect these asthma attacks. I can. It, it was. You can set it to a clock. It was just that much systematic, systematic every year, year in, year out. Couldn't find any relief, and to this day, healed of asthma, healed of food allergies. She, um, her thyroid. She had problems. She had problems with her um, hypothyroidism. Hasn't taken one pill in years. <laughs> you know, being ignorant in the world, we give ourselves to uh, to serve uh, Molech. You know, we we give our tears and you know to the fire. So in our ignorance, you know, we let the doctors you know work on her. You know, when doing pregnancies and stuff. So you know, we're still overcoming in certain areas even to this day. I remember Passover. I don't mind telling you guys, but. My wife had an issue with blood. And I went to the man yard right there and I said, Pastor, I don't know what's going on, but I need you to lay hands on my wife. He laid hands on my wife. And my not yet, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is healed of a of a of a of a of an issue of blood. And there are other other areas we're still overcoming in, but I'm telling you. But you people on the other side, that camera got your mouth on this man. You probably see her thinking, well, why everybody, you know, uh, yeah. up here testifying? Y'all supposed to be testifying about overcoming. Well, every time y'all open your mouth, y'all talk about Pastor Dow. Well, he's the man of y'all. He's the man that y'all yes, has ordained in this hour to lead his people back to him. So you can, you can, you can write your emails. You can send your text messages. You can put your stuff on Facebook. But Yah knows them that are his, and he put his Holy Spirit in his people so that he can't be taken away. He said, none of them have I lost. 
and I, this last testimony of somebody I overcame um, back in 2008. Okay, I, I was at work, and um, supervisor came and got me. Said, I don't need you to, you know, come follow me. Okay, I'm following you right now. And I go to open the door, and this guy he grabs my wrist, slaps me in cuffs, leads me to the car, right? And uh, I'm, what the heck is going on? What the heck is going on? So he told me, well, you've been arrested for such and such, such and such. Okay, okay. Took me to jail. All right. So three and a half years, I lost my job. My wife at that time had, you know, got pregnant. So everything is on my wife. She's pregnant, going back and forth, you know, to work. I can't work because now I'm trying to fight this, this you know, this case or whatever. And uh, three and a half years, I fought that. Three and a half years, three and a half years, three and a half years. I'm going through, going through, seeking y'all, seeking y'all, seeking y'all. And I remember the thing had to go to trial. And I'm, I'll never forget that Sunday, I had to go meet with the lawyer. Came back to church that day, and I went to the altar. I went to the altar, and I fell on my face. I said, Father, all this stuff is just, you know, coming. It's, it's just culminating now. And I asked the Father to deliver me from this situation. And I tell you, he delivered me. He, he, he filled me with his Holy Spirit that, that, that Sunday morning. But the, the amazing part is, the next day, before I could even sit down good, you know, the Lord came to me and said, brother, I want to tell you something. Your case is dismissed. You ain't got to worry about it. You can go home for, you know, you can go home. You got, you know, no worries. Just, just go home or whatever. You know, time goes on, and, and he brings me to this place. And I sit right there and receive the, the, the feeling, the fullness, the baptism of the Holy Spirit sitting right there in, in, in that city where Brother Victor is. And I, and I just testify to the goodness and the majesty of the Father. And I bless you, Pastor, for your services, sir. And I love you all. This is my family. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Bless y'all. I don't like talking in front of people. Uh, I'm a loner. I don't really do people a lot. My wife will tell you. Um, man, I've been to church. Churches. Walked out of churches. She'll tell you that too. Um, these brothers that are from where I'm from, Brother Freeman, my brothers, y'all know where I'm from in Durham, North Carolina. We don't see men get together and hug and still have a sense of being a man. You still you don't feel threatened. You don't feel no type of... Uh, nothing like that, but I just wanted to say, man, I, I love y'all. I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all, and I mean that. I mean, I've had so much love from here that I've, I've not even had from my, my natural family. I got a brother, and I think the last time I talked to him was, had to be at least a year. I don't know if his phone is on. I, I don't know. Uh, my family, I don't, I don't talk to him. Um, just I don't have a desire, but I, I long to be here. When we go back home, I'm a little bit of a sense of sorrow, but I'm like, I'm glad I got to see my people. And Yah said, I mean, pastor, pastor says it all the time, he, and it's, it's just so true that you, Yah knows you can't have a relationship with him without his people. And y'all are showing me that, because my wife will tell you, I don't, we, I'm, a, I'm a loner, I'm a homebody, whatever you want to call it, but um, y'all have blessed me so much. Uh, when I first came here, uh, well, when I first came to the Truth Brother Maine uh, from Ohio, um, he helped me see uh, a lot of things. I was just asking him questions. I would always ask him stuff and, and try to pick him for, di for different things, but I didn't know what to expect when I came here. But when I came here, I was greeted with so much love. And um, I'm, not really, I'm not really what, what I think. I, I don't see myself being intimidated very easily. But when I got here, I was intimidated by the love. Um, but, but it was just, I, I didn't, I'm used to a hidden agenda. I'm used to a hidden motive. But um, it, was, it was just warm. It was just warm um, until I met the pastor. And when Pastor came in, it just, I guess it was all the, all the hell in me, all the evil. <laughs> but it just, it just stopped me. I just couldn't do but look at him. And even still now, sometimes I just look at him and say, yeah, yeah Pastor. But um, it's just because it's, it's, you, you see, when you see a man that can be a man and be bold about truth, and, and, and I see the same spirit in all of y'all, it's, it's it, it, it inspires me to drive to press. Um, and not look back, and I'm just, I'm blessed. My whole life has been changed. I've had some things happen, um, you know, with family members, and Pastor, I've called in the blog, talked and talked about it. You know, people, um, 
just trying to trying to send a tax and send a tax and we send those back. Um, we've been attacked. We've been attacked um, spiritually. We've had I've had issues where I had to lay hands on people, on, on my wife, on my my daughter, and I didn't. I would have never felt that I would have had the power to do it had I not been to this place. Um, my wife. She 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 was uh, she was diagnosed with carpal tunnel. She used to work, um, and I was given I was given uh, when I came to the truth. It was it was tugging at me. That, why is she going to work? Why why are you do, why? We need to be building. We need to be building a house. We need to be. And um, so I had her stop working. But she had been diagnosed with carpal tunnel because she does desk work or did desk work. And um, I had to lay hands on her two months ago, or like about two months ago, um, because her hands they just wouldn't stop shaking. She. I, I don't know what to do. She's telling me, I don't know what to do. My hands just won't stop shaking. So I laid hands on her. I asked for forgiveness for the Father. And I, I just, I prayed and I, I commanded it to leave. And I would have never even known how to do that. I would have never known how to do that had I not been to the right place. Had the Father not put his plan in motion to, to change my life. And um, my daughter, she had, you know, situation going on with her stomach. You know, blood, she had blood coming out the back end. And um, it was just a situation where I was at work. I told my wife, just come on now, because I work at a, at a uh, I work about five minutes away from work, and I had her come down on my lunch break. On my break, I said, you know, we, I, I told my wife to command. I told her to command. I told her the things, that, you know, the, the pastor shows us how to walk in, how to walk in the truth, and it's in the book. It's in the scriptures. It's, in, it's, it's a testament to, to, the, to the faith. It's one, it's one of the signs. And so right there on the spot, we commanded it. We commanded it to leave. And you could feel her stomach moving and churning on the inside. And she said, Daddy, I feel better. Daddy, I feel better. And I just, I thank, I thank y'all. There's so many things, man. It's, it's just so many. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've ne never, never been able, been able to really feel like a man to take care of my house. And I can say that. I can say that now because I know now uh, how to be a man and, and walk in truth. Because you can't be a man without being in truth. And you can't be a man without, without a real man without the Father. And um, I'm learning that, man. I'm, I'm learning that and I'm learning uh, humility. I'm learning, I'm learning so much. I'm, I'm, even, I'm learning from my wife. I'm learning from every. I'm, lear I'm learning how to really be a servant. I'm learning um, so much more than I've ever learned, you know, uh, seeing the sisters and seeing the brothers, the brothers loving each other and, and taking care of each other, and it makes me want to do something, to do more, to, to, to give and to help. And, um, man, I, just, I, don't, I don't know where to, I don't know where to go. To, I don't know where I'm, where I'm going with this, but I just, I'm so grateful that I, I can't really even put it into words because I, I never felt that I had this power. I, I, I joined the Army, I, you know, I, you know work, but even, even with that, I just, it was, the army wasn't hard, you know. You just do what you're told. This, it's not hard. It's just the spiritual warfare part of it, you know, that you just, you got to stay in the way. And, and I'm doing my best. I'm, 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 I'm struggling and I'm striving to not look back. And um, y'all are helping me so much with that. I, I, I don't know if I would be able to do it without y'all, all of y'all. And uh, I'm grateful. Bless y'all. Oh, and, and uh, I also want to say thank you to Elder Donnie and his family because they've been so gracious to let me and my family stay with them. And I don't even stay with some of my own family members. So I, I mean, I, and they've, they've been nothing but ho hospitable, and it's just it's a blessing to, ha to have that and to be genuine. Uh, bless y'all. I love y'all. Bless you, saints. I would like to give honor to the Most High Yah, who is the head of my master's home. Uh, I have so much to be grateful for to the Most High. Uh, he has brought me so far just from death. I ran so hard after death because of rejection and yes, I had my dad in my life, but it wasn't enough. And there's just so many things in the past that 
yeah, how could you see something in me worth saving? You know, how, what was, what is it that you see in me to be amongst your people? It's just amazing to me. And I bless my master. I bless you, pastor. I bless my family in Straightway, Georgia. I bless all of Straightway here. I just, you all don't even know. Even after coming to the faith, you know, I've made so many mistakes, so many boo-boos on myself. <laughs> but Yah still has mercy on me.